Hey everybody, it's Andrew Reed with Moss Creek Mushrooms, and I have no idea what happened to the other live stream. It just would not work, so I've just started this one. Um, I don't know. We'll see if we can get the other one canceled and fixed, but uh, that noise that you're hearing in the background right now, that is my uh, little new lab assistant, the Roomba, and it is uh, studiously cleaning the way right where it is least wanted, so anyways... Looks like we got a few people joining now. Hello. Excuse you. Well, everybody, hope everyone's doing well today. I am. I am just sitting down for some mate. What's up, CJ? Walker? What's up, man? And Mr. Hideous, how to lead doodly. Well, how to lead doodly to you too. Morning, Infinite. And Caleb and Daryl. And R. Wood, Calgary, Canada. Well, hello. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. If you can't, I will do what I can to get this nuisance out of my room. Um... I think it'll leave on its own here in just a second, but thanks, CJ. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool um, to have everything. In fact, here in a little bit, um, I'll see if I can't take you guys on a tour of the place. It's completely changed since the last time we've done a live stream, so it sounds fine. Good. My, uh, my Roomba, I'm sure, is going to make a, a nuisance of itself this whole time, but let's see. Oh, hold on, hold on. He got stuck. Don't need that. All right, back. Uh, let's see. Wiser is water. Wiser's. Wiser cis water for twenty. Hey, good morning, man. Do you know how a person would make mycelium like you buy at a greenhouse for plants? Would dry cakes ground up be around the same? What do you, uh, you're going to have to clarify. Um, are you talking about like uh, mycorrhizal fungi? Uh, you can order some of those sometimes. You can order uh, like wine cap spawn, which is an opportunistic mycorrhizae. There are other, uh, what are called arbuscular uh, mycorrhizae, which live basically inside the plant cell walls. And those things are usually come in a powder form. And I don't know how to make it. Uh, I would just, I assume you just grow it out and then let it dry the, in the spore, you know, as a spore rather than as, a, uh, as an actual mycelium. Hey, Daryl. Yeah, it has been a while for a chat. I, uh, we have been busy like crazy. We went down to Atlanta and bought out a mushroom farm down there. So we've got all this equipment we're installing. Um, we've got new hires that we're training. We've got, oh my gosh, so many new strains coming in that I'm trying to trial. Not to mention all just all the work that comes along with a new place. <laughs> so it's it's a uh, it ends up being a lot for sure. Um, Brian says, how's it going, bud? Always enjoy your YouTube channel. First time on a live chat. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Brian. Um, and welcome to the live chat for the first time. And let's see. Oh, hey, Yagrasil. I'm doing very well, actually. I am doing incredibly well. Hope you guys are doing the same. Gotcha, Wiser. Yeah, I hope I answered your question then. Uh, good morning, Sun Sun Neat. Uh, Baker, good morning. How do you have, do you, hey, do you have to have a pressure cooker for agar sterilization or can you sterilize another way? I mean, honestly, um, Jack, it's going to be a pressure cooker, an autoclave, something of that nature. Um, I used to sterilize by, I would mix up my agar, pour some in a dish. And then once I had that poured into a dish, I would put it in a microwave and let it, uh, I'd probably, I think I, micro, I took the lid off. I'd have the lid upside down and the, the, the plate open and I would microwave for 15 seconds and then I would quickly, I would open the door slowly, carefully, put the plate on, but I will tell you that your contamination rates are going to be much higher that way. So, 
this little Roomba is starting to irritate me. I don't know why it chose to come vacuum right around me right this moment. Um, but anyways, Jack, that's, uh, and then I use the still air box. Uh, actually, you no, know, back then I was doing open air transfers. So, you know, it's a slow, tedious process, but you can do it that way. That's how I first started. Uh, Sunit from India. Well, hello, Sunit. Um, good morning from, uh, well, hello, Julie Trotta. It's good to see you. Uh, let's see. Greetings from Hungary. Nice. We're, we're, uh, we're definitely international. We got Hungary and India on here already. What's up, Darian? Best replacement for agar. That depends on entirely on what you're wanting to do. You can use sterilized substrate in a dish. Uh, you can use just sterilized sawdust. It's it's growth is not going to be quite as fast or anything. You can use liquid culture. Um, it just depends on what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to hatch out spores, obviously uh, most of the time you don't want to use liquid culture. You can hatch out spores in liquid culture. I've done it, but it's not the best thing in the world. Uh, Caleb says, what's a warm weather mushroom you grow with a decent shelf life? Currently growing pinks and golds, but they do they go bad fast. Uh, Caleb, the Elm Z. Uh, you, you'll find that on my website. It was by Jay Schindler. Um, he bred that one from Elm Oyster. And oh my gosh, the chat is just going crazy. Um, but uh, it's got a great shelf life. My King Blue does really well in warm weather. It's been fruiting even all the way through in these 80 and 90 degree temperatures. Um, the, the mother of pearl is blowing my mind. I am, it, it was fruiting, pinning in the incubation where it was 90 degrees and it was like 90 something degrees out in the warehouse. And that thing was still pinning and still fruiting. It was definitely stressed, but it was still fruiting and the shelf life on it's like two weeks in the, the, um, refrigerator. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. I've watched a bunch of your wonderful content now, and I had a quick question. There's a lot of discussion concerning the nature of the grow room, but it appears that there is little concern about the space in which the mushrooms incubate. Besides not having, oh my gosh, that thing just ran over my toe. Uh, besides not having large swings in temperature in this space. Is there anything else to consider when designating an incubation space room? So Baker, I prefer to have my incubation to be a fairly clean space. Um, I prefer my incubation to be positive pressured and the air filtered. Right now, I don't have that. It is less than ideal. I'm having to overproduce in order just to produce right now. Um, as it cools down, I won't have that same problem. But I prefer to keep my temperature um, around 70 degrees in my incubation. Right now, I've been hitting 80s and 90s and um, having some, some contamination with that, but I was expecting that. And then... Um, with the, uh, the air, I prefer it to be filtered. Even though we have filter patches, I don't have filtered air now. It's just outdoor air in a warehouse. Um, but I prefer filtered because it, as long as you can get your blocks to the grow room, I don't really care about how dirty my grow room um, air is from outside. Like I'll have outside quality air, but I prefer to have my incubation be as clean as possible because as long as the block will grow in, it'll usually fruit. Let's see. Patty Feeney. Hope you all are well. Uh, I don't know who's calling me from New Mexico, but I'm not going to answer on the live stream. So, um, Patty Feeney says, hope you are well. Love from Liverpool. Man, look at that. I, I knew the name like Patty Feeney. You had to be from the UK somewhere. Uh, let's see. And compost. And compost what? Uh, you're very welcome, Jack. Can barely hear it. You can barely hear the Roomba, or you can barely hear me, Mister. Thank you for all the content. Which one of your mushrooms sells the most right now? I think we're, we're selling. Uh, well, actually, Skill God, that would be. It depends, but right now the Venn diagram, right between cultures and mushrooms, I would say my King Blue. My King Blue. If you go on my website, it's like my easily my most popular strain. I, I make liquid culture by the half gallon now because I just sell so much of the culture of the King Blue. Um, but there's good reason for that. It's just a superior mushroom with a superior range, shelf life, and quality of stem. And it's just, man, I think just blows everything else out of the water. So, um, <laughs> Julie. Howdy from Texas. Well, welcome, Drake. Hello from East Tennessee. 
Hey, man, from South Africa here. Well, hey, Aiden. I've got a cousin named Aiden. Um, well, hello, South Africa. I love your channel on YouTube. Very helpful. All true, no false information. Well, I am sure there's plenty of false information, but thank you for that. I have done everything that you said, and it works just fine. Thank you for your time in the videos. Thank you, Zoltan. I really appreciate you reaching out and letting me know that everything's worked. It does. It feels good to know that uh, you know we are helpful to people. Uh, what do you do with your spent block bags? Uh, we right now, my landlord for the warehouse, he's got I think seventy something acres. He said he comes and we cut the bags off, put it in his dump truck, and he uh, takes it off, and puts it on his land. What's up? Love the channel. Has helped my mushroom journey so much. Well, thank you, real easy. I am glad you guys have helped me in my mushroom growing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like this this journey we're all on together. I really appreciate the help you guys have given me, and I'm just glad that you find me helpful and useful. Hey, man, direct from Spain. Well, hola. Uh, bienvenidos. I think that means welcome. I have not spoken Spanish in a while. Do you aerate daily all summer long for a single liquid culture jar? So, Joe, I right now I've got culture stirring. I've got uh, eight stir plates right now. I have 80-something cultures. Not every culture gets stirred every day. Um, but... I do try to go, I go through most of them every day, but they, they typically go for about five minutes in a day. I'm curious, do you have a video in your LC recipe by chance? Drake, I am in the middle of editing that right now. It should be released by Tuesday, I'm thinking, maybe Monday. CJ, hi, Andrew. How do you find going straight from LC to bulk grain bags considering you test LC first? So I test in parallel, not first. I test LC and I spray it on grain. If the LC comes out clean on the, the plate um, and the agar, then we know the grain is safe. Um, but I, I test in parallel, not before. And I do that just for speed's sake. And sometimes I'll test my LC and then make the grain, and the grain goes into production blocks before I ever even see the dish. But it's just a traceability thing for me. And make sure that I don't sell you guys bunk LC. Um, let's see. Recently got up to 110 gallon, 10 gallon sterilizer going. Big sub time now. Welcome. That's awesome, Yagrasel. I appreciate it, man. Welcome to the big leagues, right? Are you still in school? Or you, uh, maybe you guys are out for COVID. Did you move to a new place? Uh, Darian, I don't know when the last time you and I talked. So we are indeed in a place we call the Foundry. It is a warehouse. Um, and we got that. And it is 6,000 square feet or so, about 2,000 square feet of its lab and office space now. Uh, that's not including the, we got a big mezzanine and uh, a basement. So, okay, thank you, mister. I appreciate that. Uh, Aiden wants to know if I ever grow psilocybin. Well, I don't talk psilocybin on my channel, um, primarily because I run a legit mushroom farm. And um, I mean, I'll talk about some of my experiences and stuff with it, uh, but no, I don't, I don't grow it. So... Uh, luckily, once you're in the mushroom community, you don't ever have to grow it. Uh, Julie says, I want to say that I ordered some LC from you, and it is amazing. Thank you for all you do. Your videos are so informative. I'm currently building my grow room based off your setup. Love you guys. Thank you, Julie. We love you, too. And thank you so much for, for uh, reaching out. Maybe uh, consider giving me a, uh, a review on Google Reviews. I would really appreciate that. Uh, how long will LC last? I'm using quart jar with 500 milliliters, shroom supply premix, and your lids. Awesome, Rob. Um, so I have jars that are sitting there with mycelium. I still pull from them regularly um, that I have made back in almost a year ago. And are they, they, I don't sell them, uh, but I'll use them here regularly. And so since I don't sell them, I, the, that one quart jar keeps me forever. Um, I did just recently update those, so... Uh, King Blue is amazing. Yeah, Julie, I agree. King Blue is easily my favorite strain. It's uh, It was like my first strain. I, I, I will say the Mother of Pearl is starting to replace it. The Mother of Pearl, guys, I'm so proud of that strain. It's a blue oyster and a snow oyster crossed. The pins come out this electric blue, turns white. And it's kind of like uh, back in the old days, washerwomen used to wash their, clo their white clothes with indigo, blue uh, stone. Because that indigo, that blue, would made the white look even whiter. And I swear that's what's happened. Like, these mother of pearl are so hard to capture on camera because they'll bleach out the, the, the sensor. It's amazing. 
But that said, King Blue is just a workhorse. Hey, from Tucson, Arizona. Well, hello, Aaron from Tucson. Welcome to East Tennessee. I have a question about your comb tooth strain. How long does it usually take until the block is fully colonized? About a week for the combs tooth. Uh, comb tooth takes about a week to fully colonize. Um, if you use a five pound block to about 30, 12 pound, or a five pound bag of spawn to about 30, 12 pound master mix blocks. Um, it takes about a week to fully grow in. We then take a knife and just barely stab it into the bag and then shelve it on the grow room and fruit it. And it usually takes the cycle time for fruit, for um, inoculation to harvest is about the same between comb tooth and oysters being about three weeks or so. But um, the lion's mane goes into the grow room after a week. The oyster is usually about two weeks. Do you worry? Uh, do you worry about cleanliness when transferring your bags from the trough to the lab? Uh, yeah, I mean we, we do a little bit, but we pull them out hot. And we go straight to the lab. Um, so I mean, like I don't worry in the sense because it's it's worked for years now. Um, so no, I don't worry like I did when I first set it up. It says I've learned a lot from your channel. Keep it up. Well, thank you. I will. Why is it that you can't grow candy caps? Uh, I, I don't know much about candy caps, but I believe that they are a mycorrhizal species, that they are they are symbiotic species with a, a tree, and therefore they need that living tree to fruit. I could be wrong. I don't really know that much about candy caps. Thanks for answering. I've been really curious. Absolutely, Drake, for sure. How long do you let your tub... How long do you let your tub when it's packed cool? I'm starting a mushroom farm in New York and using the trough you recommended. Okay, so... Um, skill i we often have, like they're pulling blocks out of the steamer right now and they're bringing them directly into the lab to cool in the air conditioning uh right there in the hepa filter air uh they're not they're not right in the stream they're just in that same room fruit fly um what materials and its ratio do you use for the compost of pleurotus fairly mushroom well that's an interesting um Looks like I've got a Billy Martin trying to get a hold of me. Give me one second, guys. I am not forgetting you. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I'll get back with him in just a minute. Um, so, going back to that. I've never grown fairly. late. Um, I've tried, and um, I, I've never used it, so... I don't have an answer for you. I'm just about done doing lab work for some profs now. Nice, Yagdrasil. I hope that goes well. Being almost done with school is a big thing. Uh, oh, that's amazing, Crafts. Absolutely, Darian. Thank you for it, man. It's, it's pretty cool. Any plans on hiring some assistants by chance? Uh, Drake, I just hired a full-timer. Um, and I think that we're going to, I mean, send in your resume, guys. I'm always looking for talent. Um, if you're talented and I don't have a use for you right now, I may find a use for you if you got some uh, skills I'm looking for. Hi, can you talk about antibacterial agar and how people with no lab supply can get a local alternative to antibiotic additive? So it's me. You can go to the Odin Project and order some gentamicin. You can get gentamicin from Everything Mushrooms. You don't have to have a lab or... Um, Anything like that, you can just go to everythingmushrooms.com and order some gentamicin. I don't use antibiotic agar. Um, I have used it in the past, and I have found it to be more of a crutch that doesn't really give as much benefit as just learning the skill of clean work. Why are you back? How do you go home? Yeah, go home. All right. My little droid. Um, is 10% alcohol effective? No, Nick, I don't believe that it is. 70% is what I use. I have a problem. My mushroom looks like ugly. I tried different strains, but the same result. What's the problem? Too f I, so I don't know without looking at it. Honestly, Zoltan, I wish I could. Uh, looking at your temp 75, I don't know what your mushroom is. I don't know. Um, so air 24 seven doesn't mean anything to me. Talk to me about cubic feet. Not sure about the humidity. I'm spraying three times a day. So see, I, I don't even know your parameters. Uh, 2700 K would be okay. I, the lumens, I don't know your distance. 
I would really just, the strain is Sylvan Ivory. I've never heard of that. Um, I would just need to see pictures. Oh, Mother of Pearl, I got some. What's that supposed to smell like? I'm putting some on the plates and then on the grain, getting a marshmallowy smell. That, so that you're talking about like it's kind of sweet um, smelling. Yeah, Mother of Pearl is very sweet smelling, very much like a uh, the snow oyster in that way. Can you help me to make grain spawn? I tried many times. I can't get proper results. Uh, Ganesh, um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any specific questions you have on it. Uh, as far as that goes, I don't know your process. I don't know where you're going wrong. I don't know what equipment you're using. Um, if you can ask me a, a more directed question, less general, um, something more specific, I would happily, happily answer it. Will you do a video on your steamer? Uh, Julie, I can do one that shows the trough, um, but Ben has asked me not to show the boiler for basically liability reasons. Julie, I will say that probably the biggest help is going onto Amazon and looking up a sauna steamer, um, a sauna steam generator. If you use those sauna steam genera generators, you can get the one that's the same power as mine, nine kilowatts, move the pin on the uh, uh, the jumper um, down, uh, what is it, uh, on the circuit board by a few places. I can't remember exactly. I think we're going to do a video on that eventually. Um, but you move it on there just to, to remove the timer so you can run it full blast, right? Uh, so you can do get nine kilowatt for a steamer my size. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can, we can do a video on like the trough and things for sure. CJ says, hi, Andrew, can I pick your brain on moisture content? Working out how much water I add to my dry batch mix. I times it by 1.32 roughly, e.g. 10 kilograms times 1.32 equals 13.2 kilograms of water to add. What's your thoughts, dude? So I always go to 60%. So take, uh, let's say you're doing a 12-pound mix like I do. I just cannot get the lighting right in here. Um, if you take your the 12-pound mix like I do, you're talking um, about seven pounds of water and five pounds of dry material. That makes roughly 60%. Um, as far as multiple location of it or anything like that, um, I don't really know. And we always just do it percentage wise. So I always just kind of like pick a percentage and kind of go with it, um, based on the total poundage I want the bag to be. Uh, if you have any more questions about that, just ask me and I'll, I'll see if I can't come up with something for you. Have you ever tried beet pulp pellets as a supplement? I have, I did not have good results, but I have heard of other people having good results. So it makes me wonder if I just did something wrong. I'd like to try it again. Uh, I will say it made the bags a very interesting color. My plan is to use ultrasonic humidifiers with pooled air from evaporative air, water cooler, cool mist in my fruit room with an eight inch exhaust fan. What are your opinion on this plan? That all sounds good. I mean, I don't, that sounds about like what we do. Does it matter which end of the filter syringe is up on the liquid culture jar lids? Um, I don't find it to be so, no, but I find that it's easier to fit the liquid culture um, filter, the, the, the syringe filter on the liquid culture lid with the smooth pointed side down just because it clips into place easier. So a little silicone clips in, and then you've got the actual jar whole, giving it some uh, structure, some framework to, to actually do. Um, you mentioned in a previous live stream that someone offered a blotch-resistant king trumpet. Who was that? Thanks again for all your help. Uh, that may have been me, because I mean, my king's uh, blotch-resistant. Um, I don't know who else would have a blotch-resistant one. Everyone else I know has a problem with it. Have a good day in audio. Well, oh, see you, Drake. Sorry, man. I probably missed you. Huh? Uh, it's me. Yeast and agar, yes or no? I, I add yeast sometimes, and sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm, I'm growing. Uh, for oysters, they're heavy feeders. I, I do add a little bit of yeast for those. And a little bit of soy pellets and sawdust pellets to my mix. Hello, Mossy team. Thank you for everything you've done. We are now on an adventure. Thanks to you guys. Well, thank you, Upwards. I hope you guys, uh, I wish you guys well with that. I hope you do very well. Uh, Princess 
Chisholm. Hello, nice work. Please, I want to order for Pink Oyster and King Oyster Liquid Culture. Can it be sent to Nigeria? I, I'm sorry, Princess. I actually don't ship uh, to anywhere outside the United States other than um, Canada and I guess Australia now. Um, but I don't, I think I can only ship to one person in Australia because he went through the importation uh, paperwork for me. But that's, that's something like if you if you guys will do the paperwork and, and the importation certificates and all that kind of stuff, I'll happily ship to people in other countries for that. Um, Abed says, I buy spawn from outside my area. My question is, how long the spawn of mushroom healthy to stay out with temperature and 30 degrees C? Um, anything that's not refrigerated, you know, I'd give it like a week or two. You're, I mean, it probably would last longer, but anything beyond that. And you're losing peak efficiency on that. So if you have to buy a lot, I would try to keep it as cool as possible. Let's see, 30 degrees Celsius comes out to uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit is 30, so 86 degrees. Oh, you're not talking long at all, man. Um, dig a, make a cellar. Dig into the ground and make a cool spot. You'll have 50 degrees, what, right below, you know, a few feet into the ground. I, I, that's the only thing I can think of, man. you, you got to be able to keep that stuff cool or it won't last long. Uh, what are profit margins on lion's mane? Are they expensive to grow? So, ale, ale, um, my margins on any of the heresiums, uh, we sell primarily combs tooth, but any of the heresiums like lion's mane, um, comb tooth, uh, bear's head, uh, out the conifer coral, any of that stuff, all of that is an outrageous profit, which is actually why I'm about to, I'm about to do a big trial of a whole bunch of different heresium strains and then release a bulk pack within the next few weeks of a bunch of different strains that I've tried from Lenny Rockwell's stuff to Ryan Paul Gates, uh, myself, some wild cultures, some wild cultures uh, that are, have been out on the market, some of the commercial strains, all of that stuff. So, um, but yeah, no, they are not expensive. They, they cost the exact same amount to grow as an oyster mushroom. And I get a, roughly another, let's say if I sell, I sell a pound of oysters for $8 to restaurants, uh, any heresium I sell for 12 and it costs the exact same to grow. Um, they're a little bit more complicated to grow, uh, as in the timing is different, which in the demand is lower, which is why my price is higher. But I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, I've got chefs asking about it. So we're going to be doing a lot of that in the very near future. I've got a lot of breeding projects for those going as well. What's the difference between using Petri dish and a slant? And why is it a slant last longer? So typically, slants have a lot of... Uh, they've got a really deep well full of agar and nutrients. A dish has just got a thin film poured in it. So the slant... Typically, it's cleaner. Um, you get a smaller opening, uh, less risk of contamination, and then the um, the deep well. Plus, a lot of people add sticks or sawdust. I add sawdust to mine. Um, it's usually just got a lot more nutrients for a lot longer. You can store them for longer that way. Uh, petri dishes really are for multiplication of biomass, and a culture slant is to reduce the uh, amount of biomass you have to store in order to pull it out and then replicate it. Can you grow spores out in liquid culture? Yes, you can. Um, it is much more difficult to get a clean culture, uh, a clean from spore culture on, in liquid culture than it is on Petri dish, but you absolutely can. How do I know when it's time to rehydrate a shoebox? I have no idea. I've never rehydrated a, a shoebox. I also ordered your liquid culture. I can't wait. Awesome skill. Thank you very much for that. What's the best way to make a lab in an apartment? Uh, typically a closet or sometimes you can use it in the bathroom. If you anywhere, like just buy one of the small HEPA filters. I used to just do my, my lab work in my kitchen, you know, because I usually keep my kitchen pretty clean because I eat there. So can't wait to get my order in. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, if you have an order with me, I don't remember seeing anything about upwards microgreens and stuff, but, oh, well, thank you, Dylan, Darren Dylan. Um, 
probably about to order that warm weather liquid culture pack on your site. Uh, Caleb, if you go ahead and, and do that, um, I've actually got another syringe to add to it. So about this week, anyone who orders the warm weather culture pack is going to get a free syringe uh, with theirs because they're going to get the addition. Well, we've added on to it, but we just haven't updated the website yet. So there's actually about another $25 that's going to be added to the price. So get it in this week by as in probably before Sunday. Uh, you're very welcome, Julie. Thank you. I don't remember what we're thanking each other for. <laughs> uh, oh, the steamer. Yeah. Tim Stewart says, hey, Andrew, I'm about to start a small farm. I have most you. Mo whoa, whoa. OK. I have most kits sussed, but stuck on sterilizer. Ah, I got you now. Found a six kilowatt steam iron boiler with two outputs. Could this drive two 55 gallon drums? Any help appreciate it. So I don't know if that thing has a timer or anything like that. If it does, it's really annoying. I would look up a, uh, I think they call it steam moist uh, sauna steamer. That would be um, the way to go, I think. Just because it's a plug and play for the most part. If you go on mushroom growing, uh, group and Facebook, there are people who show how to modify the, those to take the timer off. Ever use bee pollen, black mustard for bulk sub? Uh, never. Um, I don't know how you would use bee pollen for a substrate. Are you talking about like bulk sub? Um, the temperature of incubation room is only to speed grow spawn and substrate. 27 degrees Celsius to incubation room of oyster is good. I mean... Uh, so I don't know Celsius very well. I wish I did. I feel so dumb talking to anyone else outside in the world, uh, having to constantly convert to Fahrenheit, but such is my heritage. So um, <laughs> Fahrenheit, and I'll let you do the conversion. I try to keep my incubation room at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I have found that to be 70 to 75 Fahrenheit. My grow room, I try to keep it at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, my incubation is like 80 degrees, and my grow room is at about 75. So nothing is ideal for me right now, but the warehouse has required us to build infrastructure that is good enough and not ideal. Uh, yeah, you're still, yeah. Yeah, that's the Mossberg. <laughs> I keep that thing handy. I understand. I sent an email to Moss Creek Mushrooms three days ago. It contains accurate data and pictures. Will you be able to watch it? Uh, Zoltan, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, I get so many emails in a day. I try to keep up with it all. I fail constantly. I'm actually, I really think I'm going to have to hire an assistant um, just to kind of like take all the communication from me and then just ask me questions when they need it. So Melanie already does a good job of that for Facebook, but everything else is different. Uh, let's see. Alternativa. Alternativa? Have you ever tried coffee grounds as an oyster substrate? I have. I don't like it. Uh, it works better for shiitake than it does for oyster. Um, that said, they work fine. You can use them. I just don't find them to be as good as what I currently use. How much space would you say you need for inoculation versus the grow room when growing fast strains like oysters? So grow room needs more space than incubation because you can pack bags more tightly. The way I always do it is calculate out how much space you're going to need for your grow room, right? How much your target is, then that's going to be your target blocks. So if I have, if I get two and a half pounds first flush of oysters and I want to grow, um, I don't know, a uh, hundred, right? A hundred pounds a week. So what you do then is you just go 100 divided by 2.5 equals 40. So I know I need 40 blocks a week in my grow room. That means I need to be able to hold about, um, what is that? 40 blocks a week times. So you might as well multiply that by four. So you multiply by four and that comes out to 160. So your grow room is able to hold 160. Um, that way you get two flushes. Actually, you would, you would only need half that if you're doing first flushes. But let's say you want to do second flushes and just count them as bonus. So now you're going to go back and you're going to go, so, oh, for my incubation space, I'm going to need to be able to hold at least, um, no, what is it? Roughly two weeks worth of blocks. So you need to be able to hold 160 blocks in your grow room 
but you're only going to need to be able to hold about 80 or so oyster blocks in your incubation. That's because your blocks are going to stay for that second flush longer in the grow room than you are in your incubation. Your incubation only needs to hold about two weeks because it takes about two weeks. You might add a third week just to be safe. And then if you end up not needing it, you can use it for specialties that take a little bit longer and then just put a few of those aside. Um, Oscar, I tried to order stuff on your website and there was a $50 shipping charge for $80 worth of products. I bailed out. I wrote TV, the webpage to see if it was an error, but got no response. Sorry, Oscar. I probably, what I do with those is I forward those to Melanie and then I let Melanie uh, take those. I, I don't know why it would be charging you. I know that she did recently fix the shipping issues that we were having with it charging people too much. So maybe try it again. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't respond. Like I said, I get so many emails. I'm trying to keep up with it all, but there's definitely stuff falling through the cracks. Um, what is your best advice for someone who's trying to start a small farm? Um, make all your mistakes on the cheap. Don't go too bad, too big, too quick. Make sure you even like growing mushrooms before you get into it heavy. You know, Klein says, "Hey, Andrew." Hervé from Belgium, out of context, I wonder what to do with the stems I've cut and don't want to eat. Do you recycle them? I've heard people using it to make powder and tea. Is it okay? Yeah, I usually make a broth with it or, I mean, honestly, at this point, we've got so many that they just kind of go in our worm bin um, and worms eat them or black soldier fly larvae, they eat them. But if you're talking about just whatever to do at home, you can make tea with them. You can make a soup stock. Uh, you can can them. You can pickle them. You can... I mean, it just kind of depends. There's all kinds of things you do. You can powder it for sure. Um, hold on. I have someone asking about a order. Okay. What is the best way to store liquid culture for long-term storage? Uh, just in a syringe on our, in a refrigerator. Unless it is a tropical species that doesn't take refrigeration without dying, in which case you want to um, leave it out at room temperature. I have used, I've had liquid culture sitting in a syringe for over a year and used it, and it came out just fine. By the way, is that a rifle behind you? It is a shotgun, not a rifle. Uh, there is a... Uh, there's a BB gun that looks like a 30 caliber rifle there. Uh, but that's my kids there. We got a big field out back and, um, you know, we, uh, they let them go out there and, uh, shoot the BB guns. Any Pleurotus SS did you used? Okay. I don't know what Pleurotus SS is unless you mean species like maybe SP or something. Um, what any Pleurotus species did you, you did you use? What materials do you use for the compost of Pleurotus mushrooms? May share it. And have you ever used the fairly communist giant fennel plant for compost? I have not ever used the giant fennel plant for compost. Uh, if you're talking about like the substrate that we grow on, it is sawdust in soybean hulls in pelletized form and with water added and then cooked. Um, I use that with any Pleurotus species I use. Um, but I've never grown Pleurotus fairly. Uh, you're very welcome, LL. In the grow room, do you still prefer 65 to 85 percent humidity? Also, what temp is best? So, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's roughly the the same. I, I 65 on the low end, 85 on the high. It bounces back and forth. Um, so if there's a problem, I might change the parameters, drop the bottom a little lower, up the the top a little bit. To like 90, 95, but that's rare. Um, usually it stays about 65, 85. My gosh, that little fungus gnat, is, I, I don't know how it got in here. I don't like it in here. I'm between two clean rooms. We should not have a fungus gnat in here. So the first step to starting a small mushroom business seems daunting. What should a closet grow room beginner do to start making money? Well, I would do... What was that? Um, I would do... Venture? Oh, my dog down there making noise. Uh, so the first step to starting a small mushroom business seems daunting. What should a closet grow room beginner do to start making money? I mean, just grow mushrooms, sell mushroom. That's that's basically it. Um, 
You should start eating them, give them away to your friends, get word out there that you are a fungophile, right? And allow people to come to you. Use your stems for double extracts. That actually sounds like a good way to go. I'm actually about to start doing some alchemical extracts. I follow a guy on Instagram. Uh, crap, I forgot his name all of a sudden. Who does some of the alchemical uh, transfigurations for like lion's mane? So he's got like salt, sulfur of lion's mane, that kind of stuff. And it looks beautiful. I'd love to try it. Which is best, petri dish or liquid? Uh, it depends on what you want, Nara. I prefer liquid culture for almost in everything, but uh, nothing will ever be agar for cleanup work. I read a tip about making an LC by pouring sterilized water into a shaken colonized jar, then back out. Ever try it? I have not uh, tried that. I know a lot of people make liquid culture in a bunch of different ways. Um, that technically wouldn't be culturing in liquid unless, um, I guess, unless you had a sugary liquid and then you let it grow. Some people, I've heard of people doing that, shaking it, pouring it back out, and then pouring that water into whatever they want to inoculate. At that point, I don't know why you would do that, though. Just go ahead and use your grain spawn if you already have grain spawn. Um, but... Hmm. There's some interesting things there. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I've not ever tried it, though. How many much do you charge for oysters at Farmer's Market? $20 a pound. Pretty much anything we sell, we sell at $20 a pound. Unless it's a wild mushroom, we might go up, sometimes upwards of 40 Anything really special, you know, we, we charge more. Um, but we do it in five-pound increments. So five pounds a quarter pound, uh, $5 a quarter pound um, is what we sell at. Yeah. What's up, Rich? Uh, do you grow any sclerotia? I don't. I have not grown any sclerotia. I'd like to. I'm planning on trying to do, um, what's it, the umbrella polypore. I'd like to try that. Can cloning spawn give same result as mother culture? Yeah, I mean, I, I so mushrooms don't really age. I, that's kind of like a lot of people talk about that. Mushrooms don't really age the way we think of aging. They develop enzyme blindness. Um basically mushroom diabetes. So don't feed your stuff sugar, 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 grain, carbohydrate, sugar, you know, like that's all sugar. But uh, um, if you give them other things to eat, it usually makes them last longer. Um, you can clone from spawn. I've cloned from spawn. I've cloned from fruit in the grow room. I've cloned, you can clone from any stage of the process. When you sterilize your liquid culture jars, do you close them fully? I had the problem that the syringe filter pops out when I do that. Um, I do close them fully. I, your syringe filter, do you really, is it really secured? I mean, it sounds like you may not have it secured. Um, are you using RTV silicone to seal it in place? Um, if your hole is just right, um, like you use the right size drill bit, you can just pop that syringe filter in place with a little RTV silicone and it, that metal bends down and so you've got your syringe filter with the jar bent against it like that. And when it tries to come back up, it bites. And it's much harder to slip. So I don't know what you're using, how you're doing your liquid culture jars. But if you do them like mine with the right size drill bit, it makes them actually pop into place. Do you use any rust prevention inside your trough? I do not. It is completely rusted out. Uh, let's see, Celsius, multiply by two, add 30 minus three. Okay. Thank you, Joji. Why not just add 27? Man, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Steam moist sauna steamer. Thanks much. We'll check it out. Absolutely, Tim. I highly recommend those in place of me showing you guys any of my death traps. Brian says, how often do you test your liquid culture for contamination? Um... Uh, so I don't do it on a time schedule. I do it on a volume schedule. So my, when my jar is first grown in and right before I start selling, um, and then when it's a, about half at the halfway point is my next test. And then after that, um, I will, at the very last of it, I will take my, a couple of, uh, syringes out of the last bit of it, put a couple of drops on a plate and use those for uh, either starting new liquid culture or whatever I need to do there at the last. <clears throat> I only ever go liquid culture to liquid culture three times. And then I always go back to my a culture slant. 
Which mushrooms in the warm weather pack can survive lower temperatures? All of them except pinks. And even then, like they say pinks, and I'm going to say pinks just to have liability not on me, but I've had pinks survive in the refrigerator. So I don't know. I really don't know if pinks can survive the refrigerator or not, but I would say you can put any of them in the refrigerator, save the pink. Though when the milky mushroom goes in, um, which I won't do that one. That one's not the one that's upcoming, but uh, I won't do that one until I actually get fruiting trials done on it. Um, but that one I've heard cannot go in the refrigerator. Uh, let's see. Hello. Why the most videos about oysters and rarely about growing white buttons? Well, because the big guys aren't making videos. And the, the you know the the Monterey mushrooms they're not making a lot of videos they have videos out there you can go look them up um, they exist but my videos are all about oysters if you're asking about why mine are about oysters and not about buttons it's because I don't grow buttons I'm not interested in growing buttons how much time does the LC spend on the magnetic stir about five minutes a day uh, as old if it's an Isla agar to LC then all the time. I mean, you can leave it on there all the time, but I have actually seen some cultures have a hard time when they're first introduced to LC for the first time. Certain types of mushrooms do not take. I've had this with hens. A wild hen growing on a log did not like the sugar water. I had to acclimate it over time. During that time, I was stirring it every single day, and I saw zero growth. I then set it aside, thinking, well, it's contaminated, and I put it aside, and I forgot about it for two weeks. And I went to go clean that jar and I saw it was growing slowly. I then took that, started stirring it because it had, you know, growth on it. And now from now on, whenever I'm doing agar to liquid culture, I always wait until I see a fair amount of visible growth before I start stirring. And I will say that that has sped up the process so much for me. So, um, let's see. Dehydrated liquid culture process. I haven't found a good guide. You mean to, wh why are you dehydrating your liquid culture? I don't, I don't understand. Tell me, tell me why, and I'll see if I can't see what the process, what you're wanting. Um, YouTube at Caro, a dehydrated liquid culture would not be liquid. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm not sure what you're trying to do there. Unless you're trying to dehydrate the liquid culture to get just the mycelium so you can powder it. Because I've thought about that a lot, about how people want, myceliated supplements, but they don't want carbohydrates. They don't want to be just purchasing carbohydrates. One is if you just grew up massive amounts of liquid culture and then dried that and powdered it and then went from there. I don't even know if it would have the medicinal compounds if it's grown only on sugar water, but you know, we'll see. Um, let's see. Comments on, did I skip one? Comments on gas exchange, hole size on grain spawn jars, quart size jars would have would having more holes slow colonization. Uh, no, more holes does not slow colonization. In fact, it usually speeds it up to a point. But I'll tell you, I use the white lids uh, for grain spawn. I produce, do one quarter inch hole with a drill, and then I put a synthetic filter disc underneath it and close it up. And that is all the airflow I've needed. I've my, my grain jars colonize like that when I spray liquid culture in them. When you clone from tissue, does that reset the life cycle of the mushroom, or do you always have to use spores to do that? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question, Frederick. Uh, Frederickus? Fred? Fredericus Rex. I'll just call you Rex. Um, what's up, Ben? The... Uh, the life cycle gets reset, yes. Spores are for sexual transmission of genes. Cloning is the same set of genes set aside into a new, uh, to a, basically you take the organism and you separate it into two organisms. So spores reset the life cycle. Cloning is one part of the life cycle going from clone to fruit to spores to a new strain, that is a life cycle. But uh, you can clone tissue and it will go back to being vegetative instead of fruiting tissue. You keep your mushrooms cool at farmer's markets. Yes, 
uh, a chest of ice with uh, a tray of mushrooms laid on top of it. Keeps it nice and cool. Uh, sometimes some ice chips thrown under the oyster mushrooms basically to evaporate, you know, let that water evaporate and keep them moist instead of drying out at market. I appreciate the videos and thanks for letting me know about the updates. Absolutely, Oscar, for sure. Rocky River, I've always had trouble with the business side of farming. I'm more interested in growing and designing growing related things. Yeah, I feel you there. Um, my business didn't start doing well until I started treating my farm like a business rather than a farm. So we are now a mushroom business first, who a business that happens to farm. And ever since then, things have gotten a lot easier and better for me. What size steam hose do you use for your trough? That's a Ben question. Uh, I, we, when we go out there, I can take a look, but I think it's three quarter inch PEX. Uh, it is not rated for steam, so be forewarned. Um, I didn't keep the mushrooms cool at the farmer's market. I don't live where it's 110 and 90% humidity in the summer. I don't live where, oh, gotcha. Yeah, I have to keep my stuff cool for sure. Lion's mane extract. Yeah, I know, man. That sounds so good. I want to try it. Good seeing and thanks for the reply. I definitely second the idea of getting an assistant lull. <laughs> yeah, right, Daniel. I appreciate that. Could you go into a little bit about when the mushies are good enough to harvest? Because I would because I would give Golden another day than what I think would be mature and would be getting a pale yellow color. Uh, yeah, here, I'll tell you what, here in a minute, we'll go out there to the grow room um, and we'll uh, we'll take a look at some mushrooms out there. If Samantha doesn't pick them all already. But I will say that, excuse me, for gold, for gold, I would do, um, let the caps flatten. Once the caps are pretty flat, that's usually pretty good. Sometimes you can let them, you know, get that little curly. Oh my gosh. Okay. That was harder than I thought it was. You know how the cap gets wavy like that? Sometimes I would do like that. But yeah, if you want it bright, you have to pick it young. If you want weight for the gold, you have to let it go pale. So that's one of the reasons why I sell by volume, so I can give the absolute best mushroom to my chefs for the uh, appropriate amount of money rather than trying to cheat myself on weight. Weight is just a, such a terrible way to grow mu to sell mushrooms. Blows my mind how few people just go on, like go on the volume, sell them by volume, and just explain to your chefs, it's like, look, I don't want to charge you $8 a pound water, and if you want weight only, then I am only ever going to sell you the one heaviest type of mushroom ever. I mean, you want this diversity and this quality, yet you got you to gotta pay for it by volume. I have a 10 by 10 grow, room, grow tent with ample ventilation, not stemmy, and 12 disc house of hydro humidifier. Some spots of the fruits are very wet. Rest is fine. Do I need additional fans to push fog around better? If so, what kind? Um, you might... Uh, create a, a larger swing. You need a dry out period is what it sounds like. So put your low end about 65% and then on your humidistat and then on the top end, put it at like 85. Let it, let it, let your, let your room have long periods with no fog. I don't like fans in my grow room. They just, they're annoying. They're hard to clean. You can never keep them clean. They just push air around any, you know, they dry out mushrooms. They just create more problems. I find drill a smaller hole for the stopper. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking for the uh, uh, for the lid question. About to build a shed around 150 square foot for grow room. Also, might be buying house, so would use garage. What do you think about starting sale? Hold on a second, my lovely. I have I lived at the steamer you have... and I have picked. And mushroom I, schmutz. I have changed the fan. Right on your eyebrow. Yeah, I've changed the growing fan, so I'm super gross. Gotcha. Anyway. Hi, guys. <laughs> so I am... Look at that. Our numbers are skyrocketing. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> Bye. Love you, too. Uh, all right. Um, where was I? Who am I? What am I doing? Oh, what do you use garage? What do you think about starting sales with COVID stuff going on still? Think that's any hindrance? I think social media, um, get your social media presence on. 
sell to people Facebook Marketplace. That has been such a big boon to me. Sell at retail prices, so $20 a pound, and allow offer a CSA um, option where people can pay you $100 a month and you give them two and a half pounds of mushrooms a week. I mean, that has been, that has been mind-blowingly profitable for me and has really helped through the whole COVID process. And by the way, guys, I know everybody's really worried about this COVID stuff, but I mean, not that everyone's going through this, but we're doing better than we were before. Like, I hate to say it because I know everybody's having a hard time, but my goodness, business is good with the mushroom stuff during all of this. Not just online stuff. The online stuff's good, but I mean, fresh mushrooms. Like, I've got way more demand than I have mushrooms right now. Thanks, man. Thanks for educating me. Lots of love from India. Absolutely, Nara. Thank you. Hello, thumbs up for the good work. I want to order for pink oyster, king oyster, and butt mushroom liquid cultures. Can the liquid cultures be sent to Nigeria? Princess, as I said earlier, I can't ship to Nigeria. Uh, I, right now, I can ship to the only places I can ship to outside of the United States are Canada and Australia. I, I can't ship to Africa right now, anywhere in Africa. Um, I also don't have button mushroom cultures. However, um, who was it? There was somebody that was shipping out of the States. I think it may have been Lenny Rockwell. So check out Mycelium Emporium. He might be able to get you some stuff. I really wish I could help you though, darling. One, do I need to cross mycelia to get a diploid mycelium to bear fruit? Well, if you have a haploid, then yeah, you will. If you get one spore to hatch out, that's, that'll be a, a, depending on the species. Um, the black poplar mushrooms, I think they have tetraploid um, spores. Button mushrooms, usually one spore will be a complete organism. I think they're already diploid. They may be tetraploid as well. Um, I feel like I'm using the wrong word there. But anyways, it just depends on a lot of things. But usually if you've got spores, it's hard to get a single spore by itself. I live in an area with big cities all around, so... In fact, I mean, I think right now there is a huge window in the farming community. I think all types of farming are going to be blowing up for the next little bit. Um, we're going to be charged. We're going to be getting a lot more retail prices, and anyone who can build systems of sales in the retail range during all of this, it's going to be hard to build a market. I think, but when all of this stuff calms down, I don't think it's going to calm down for a little while. In fact, I think we're going to have a really rough November, but I think we're going to have a really good November, and I think farmers in general are going to have a really good November. Um, anyone who's got anything to sell, that is. But I do think that this summer is still going to be good, and then we're going to see some tumultuous times. During tumultuous times, farmers always do well. Um, well, I mean, unless there's like people raiding your farm, which I'm not expecting that kind of stuff. So I think that you being in the place with big cities, being able to have a small but very profitable farm um, is going to be even easier for you. So I think right now is a good time for that. That said, use your own judgment. You know, think, man, I just cannot, you know what? I don't like the, the level of where you guys are at. I have to look at the camera. So let me move all of this around. I don't want to set you guys up. Right about there. And now, oh, that is so much more comfortable. I don't feel like I'm not looking down anymore. All right. So for someone who's grown a few kids and wants to move up to the next step, what supplies would you recommend on getting on a $500 less budget? Uh, oh. Huh. Pressure cooker would be number one. The pressure cooker is one of the single most useful things in mushroom growing, any kind of sterilization. So, Presto, you can get for about 80, 90 bucks for a, like a 23 quart. So there's about one fifth of your budget gone. Um, jars, I would be doing liquid culture. Uh, in fact, I would do, I had no HEPA filter. I would do liquid, I would do pressure cooker. I would do liquid culture jars. I would get bags and a, seat, a small cheap sealer. And I would use the uh, 
self-adhesive, uh, self-healing ejector ports that you can get from Shroom Supply, put a little piece of tape over it, uh, you pressure cook that, and then now you've got a way to inject your liquid culture. Um, and you can do that into grain, and then I would grow on straw, probably, so to keep from having to have um, a HEPA filter. Because so $500 range, I, in fact, you know, I should do a video on the hepa mushroom farm. That would probably be good. Probably very useful. But that's that's what I would suggest. That right there is about your budget right there. Between bags, grain, straw, bags, pressure cooker, and then like a turkey fryer and a small pot or barrel to get your straw in. Um, and then just any money you get from the that budget or off those investments, put it right back into buying more expensive infrastructure. Work your way up to a HEPA filter as fast as you can. Joe says, Daniel will see right before the veil breaks, but it actually doesn't matter. If you let it keep opening, you will just have a bigger mushroom. I mean, it's true, but they all, the texture also changes and the colors change. You are drinking mate. Yeah, I am one. Uh, I don't remember where I put it. There it is. Yeah, I'm drinking mate. Though not in a traditional gourd. I broke my gourd. So, um, let's see. Kevin Bissell, build a Simpsons glove box. I don't know what a Simpsons glove box is, but I know what a glove box is, and I highly recommend those. Juan says, I'm from Argentina. Ah, okay, so no wonder you know what mate is, huh? I had a friend who uh, stayed in Chile, Chile and Argentina for a while, um, but I actually heard from mate about mate from another friend, and he came back, and we both had discovered mate while we were away from each other, so that was fun. Uh, what hardwoods fuel pellets do you prefer? Uh, I just get mine from Tractor Supply, so whatever they're using there. Uh, Joe says white buttons are commercial. Oh, I was in like big, like commercial. Yeah, absolutely. Mossy Creek is craft, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. I hope to be commercial craft. Do you still use one five pound spawn bag to 50 12 pound blocks? Yes, I still do that. Uh, right now, I think our standard's 30, but we still can do 50 for sure. Can you tell me the coffee agar recipe? Uh, it is literally just a spoonful of coffee. Like, I don't even measure the spoonful. It's just a spoonful of coffee grounds into my agar, then pressure cooked and poured. Uh, stirred constantly while pouring. Could maple sap be used as LC? I bet it can. I, I think any sugar pretty much can. In fact, I, I would like to trial out different types of sugars compared to on different species and just see what's really available there. Um, I liquid culture. Don't know what that means. Do you shake your grain spawn jar bags? I'll tell you what, guys, let me be right back. It's going to be an empty screen for a moment, but I'll be right back. How about that, guys? All right. Uh, maple syrup, liquid water. Do you shake your grain jars, spawn bags? So if I'm making my uh, grain spawn with liquid culture, I just spray it in and I don't shake it until I see a big core of growth. Then I'll shake that up to speed up the process. But honestly, if you can take liquid culture and you can spray it evenly across the top, it usually inoculates the entire bag pretty evenly by itself. Suggest to me the oyster mushroom liquid culture ingredients, sir. Uh, I'm actually work, working on a video for this. That's what's being released early next week is my liquid culture recipe. Um, but my suggestion, um, which Lenny Rockwell came up with the base, basics for this recipe. I don't know where he got it from or if he just made it, but uh, one part malt extract, 
four parts potato dextrose or cornstarch, I mean corn sugar. And then, um, well, let's not go parts. I do, oh yeah, sorry. One part malt extract, four parts corn sugar, mix all that up, and then you'll use 20 grams of that per 500 milliliters of water. Bummer, break is over at 12. Maybe I'll try to get on the next chat. Thanks for all previous info, nonetheless. Absolutely, BL. Sorry you didn't get to see it. Hopefully you'll come back and get to watch your answer that you had earlier. There is a delay, plus I'm behind on comments. So, um, Do you only shake and mix your substrate when you add spawn? Typically, yes. Um, but, I mean, if liquid culture has just inoculated like a core and, like I said, um, the rest of it is uninoculated. I'll break that up and mix it up. So is this, is a square grow room. Okay. Well, I mean, mine's rectangular, so I would imagine a square would be okay. How do you isolate strains? If you transfer a spore syringe to LC instead of agar, will strains just outcompete one another in LC? So yeah, pretty much they'll just outcompete. It's not, they don't behave this. In fact, Paul Stamets in his book, my uh, growing gourmet and medicinal mushrooms talks about how, <clears throat> spores act, like a spore based culture acts very differently in liquid culture than growing spores out on agar. It is very difficult to sector. Usually you're just getting the most aggressive strain or two out of there. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can do it and it'll be a new strain. And maybe if you do some in each like some spores, a few drops of spores into each liquid culture jar, and you do a lot of them, you get a lot of different strains, perhaps. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Rich, I didn't get to your Hey Sam comment before before she left. Um, how many spawn bags do you make from one jar? Uh, so, I, I can do upwards of, I can do, if I really want to stretch it, I can make one syringe go into like five grain spawn bags. I don't like doing that. I prefer 10 milliliters. That said, if you're talking about a quart jar, that's like 40 to 50 syringes. So you're talking 40 to 50 uh, spawn bags that way. Uh, Julie, sorry, Julie. Yeah. Like, like I said, the chat delay made it to where you, I didn't get to you uh, to get to tell Sam for you. Have you ever used quinoa for grain spawn? I have not. That sounds like an expensive and unnecessary grain spawn. But if it's what you got, maybe maybe use that. Adorable to see you get discombobulated when your love came in to talk to you. You two are just rest. Thank you, B. I appreciate that. <laughs> she does rock my world. It's crazy. Darian, can you expound on what you mean by selling by volume? Uh, yeah, Darian, absolutely. So selling by volume, I picked a standard size. I picked... 10 pounds of mushrooms, blue oysters is what I chose. Those blue oysters are kind of the standard across the country. I then took those blue oysters and bought a box, like worked until I found a box that fit roughly 10 pounds every time. A little over, a little less was, was okay, a little fluctuation, but I wanted that 10 pound case. Now it's like an 18, um, 18 by 14, 18 by 12. I can't remember all of a sudden. But it's just that we base everything off that case now. It is a, we sell everything by the case, not by poundage. Um, so we don't have any certified like scales and stuff anymore on that kind of thing um, for, for the fresh mushrooms. There is no extra work uh, involved. It is literally just pick mushroom, place in box, fill up box, sell box. I mean, you know, that's it. So um, what's up, Rom, Rom Nom Gobbler? <laughs> What is the rarest culture you have? So, Plebe Jones, I would like to ask you what you mean by rare culture, because I have some cultures. I've got a bunch of cultures that I have bred and I have not released anywhere. Um, I'm sitting on about 396 cultures waiting for trial right now. Um, so that said, I have about 396 cultures that can be found nowhere else in the world but here, uh, with more on the way. Um, but if you mean like rarest species, I don't know what would be the rarest thing I have. Maybe the green elf cup. But I mean, I got that from Lenny Rockwell, so I don't really know. Uh, let's see. Nice shotgun. Thanks. 
<laughs> yeah, everybody comments on that. I need to probably move that out of the uh, frame, huh? Don't want to get demonetized. Um, let, let's see. Could spend 500 on just the pick. Oh, PC. You could. Yeah, absolutely. For If you want to get an All-American, which All-Americans are great. They're just so expensive. I don't know that they're worth it. Except the electrics. The electrics are absolutely worth it. But you better be, you better come correct, you know, to justify that $1,000 uh, bill. Do oysters, specifically king oysters, inoculate on corn or rice holes or wheat berry? So you can do king oysters on pretty much any grain. I mean, I use oats, but you can do on corn. So we will grow on rice holes and wheat berry. But uh, my understanding is all of those except the wheat are pretty low in nitrogen and pretty low in protein. So I don't know. Uh, it's not rich. It's not a Mossberg 590. It's Mossberg 500. Yeah, yeah, it's the 500. Uh, I am looking for the Mossberg. What is it? The I wouldn't mind getting a Mossberg security shotgun, but I'm not there uh, right now. I, I can't find them anywhere. I've, I've checked every gun store. Um, I'm wanting to get two of them. A Remington 870 would be nice. I have a couple of those, but they're all the long barrel. I can't find security barrels anywhere. I can't find the security shotguns anywhere. I uh, was at the Maverick. Um, I want one of those really bad. I'd like to have a couple things. So uh, it's a mossy thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, let's see. Building my boiler this week. Also glad to hear it's going to get good during the food shortage that's coming. I thought the same. Yeah, Tyler, a lot of people think that the food system is just fine. And I, I'm seeing tremors everywhere. I know a lot of farmers. Um, what was it, out in Nebraska? They just had all that damage done by the tornado. Um, before that, a lot of people weren't even planting during COVID. Um, a lot of harvesting hasn't been done, and those harvests typically get processed and put into the food system, and then they'll be eaten about a year later. So we've not even seen all like all the pigs that went off market. We've not seen that shortage. Um and I don't even think there's going to be a shortage of food, so to speak. I don't think that at all. But I think that getting the food where it needs to go is going to be difficult. So having local farms around and have those local farms prepared, I think it's going to be really good. And I don't see a lot of people preparing. So I think it is best for everybody. Plus, food prices are already rising. At the grocery store, I think we went by and it's like 33% across the board is because well, we save receipts you know, on everything. Samantha... Thank God Samantha is an organized person. I am not. I'm a chaotic mess. But Samantha saved these receipts, and we can compare bills to you know a year ago. And we're like 33 34% above just across the board on food. And that, you know, it's it's weird. And uh, you can even look at the, the weights of some of the foods from like a year ago. And like the bags, the weight has changed, but the bag size has not changed. You know, that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's, it's just going to get a little weird, I think. And I think it's, I don't think it's going to get bad. I don't think we're going to have famine. I don't think anyone's starving to death in the United States really, but um, I do think it's going to be a good time to be a farmer. Unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know how you say that. Um, you're very welcome, Kevin. Let's see. Ron Smith wants me to do a $500 video. Okay. You write that down. I'll make a list of videos here. So if anyone has a list or a type of video they'd like to see, let me know, and I may or may not add it to the list. Um, so $500 farm video. Wait, that one's going to be an interesting one, huh? All right. Uh, let's see. Haha, <laughs> commercial craft. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, well... Um, I, I don't know. I've never wanted to be a, just a small business owner. I, I want to grow. Mossy Creek mushrooms is just the first step, but it is basically the most important step because it is the foundation upon which I will build everything else that I'm building. So can a new strain be created from a mixture of spores of two similar hybrids in the same LC? So I don't know what you mean by two similar hybrids. Um, I feel like there may be a language barrier here, Zoltan, but I'll try my best. Yes. If you get a spore from a oyster mushroom over here and a spore from a different strain of oyster mushroom and then put them in the same dish and they grow, as long as they will grow together, um, some spores are not compatible, but if they're compatible, then they'll grow together and they'll become a, a new fusion 
um, they'll swap, uh, was it nuclei, I think, or maybe they just swap DNA. I can't remember exactly how it works now. I think that they will legitimately replicate their nuclei and switch them back and forth and fuse. And then from that fusion point, they spread out with the two halves combined into a single nuclei. nuclei. Single nucleus? Nucleus. I can't remember it now. But anyway, it, it replicates uh, line, in a linear way from that point. But yeah, it'll, that's how, I mean, I, everything, all the new strains that I create is from taking spores from two different strains um, and spore streaking them, right? So thanks for all the great insights. Have you used coffee pellets, spent coffee grounds as a substrate before? I've never used them in pellet form. Now that would be interesting. I would, where do I get coffee pellets? That would be great. Uh, the productivity on coffee is low for oysters compared to soy. Um, so there you go. How easy would you say king oyster is to grow? Any special quirks in your experience in my country? They all seem to be coming from South Korea, which baffles and perplexes me. So yeah, um, king oyster is more difficult than an oyster mushroom. It is, um, still cannot catch that fly. Um, the king oyster suffers from blotch more easily. It is not very heat tolerant. It loves the cold. It is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, it's slower. It takes longer to grow. I, I don't, I don't remember what you would say, how you would put that exactly, but it, uh, it, it is a slightly quirky mushroom to grow and each King oyster strain is going to be very different. I, in my experience, the Kong strain that, uh, Norspore at least used to sell. I don't know if they still do. Um, the Kong strain is very susceptible to blotch. So you really need to keep your humidifier clean and your grow room cool to grow those. I don't grow Kings at all through the summertime because I like to grow more with the temperatures that are outside and only just kind of cut the worst of the temperatures. Um, that said, I mean, if I could keep everything at 65 at a reasonable rate, I would. So, um, Yes, everybody, make sure to like this video, please. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, hey, when you're going for second, when when you're going for second flusher, do you soak? Oh, when you're going for second flush, do you soak the block first? All right. Sorry, Mark. When you when you type it out into two different sections, um, and people's comments get in between, it, it makes a weird comment sandwich, and it, it I just the only reason why I was sitting there flummoxed on. Uh, what you were saying. Uh, no, I, when I get my, so the way I get my second flushes is pick mushroom, wait about 10 days and then the second mushroom comes out. So is it sketch for me to work without a still air box flow hood? So when I was in college, Vaughn, we never worked in front of a flow hood. The entire time I did microbiology, um, we never worked in a flow hood. I did biodiversity, which was the biology majors, um, biology class, biology 101. We never did any flow hood work there. In microbiology, we were introduced to the flow hood. I think we did a tiny little bit of work there, but most of our work was open air. It was just open air transfers. Um, they would get contaminated occasionally, but I mean, you know, we did a lot of different experiments. And then, so no, I don't think it's impossible. It is more sketchy. You will have more contamination without a flow hood. Flow hoods, flow hoods don't really... <clears throat> It's not that everybody thinks that you need a flow hood to work. And I don't think that's the case. I do think you need a flow hood if you really want to produce commercial quantities of stuff. Because all a flow hood really does, in my opinion, is really allow you to get into a flow, right? Like it really allows you to kind of like just pump out work, pull it from this side, sanitize it, work it out the other side. And it allows you to just like just work and work and work and work. You don't have to constantly stop, re-sanitize the entire area. You know what I mean? Like you can just pump out work with the flow hood. Um, if you're, when you're first learning, just, just do open air transfer. But I mean, a still air box is so cheap. You could go get a Sterilite bin, cut a couple armholes in it. You've got the lid you can take on and off to add stuff, re-sanitize everything, done. You can even get one of those small HEPA filters. Little trick here, guys. And silicone, one of those small little HEPA filter cleaners to your still air box and then have HEPA filter cleaned air going into your still air box, creating a positive pressure still air box. Uh, that's what I used to do. And that is how I, I use that to work up enough money 
to start getting into getting a flow hood and things like that. What do you use for the ceiling of your grow room? Uh, plastic, Julie. I, I, we just have uh, it's just two by fours with plastic stapled or not stapled uh, um, roofing screws with little washers on them. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, oven tech. That's a good way to go too because you can create heat, um, which that heat uh, allows for a, a, a constant outflow of air. That's a good way to go too. Uh, in fact, oh my gosh, go check out some of the lab work of, uh, oh, what is Pak, Pak Tong, Pak D Tong, Tong D, Pak something. I can't remember his name. He's on YouTube and he does uh, a lot of mushroom growing in like, I think it's Thailand and they don't have HEPA filters. So they do have solar boxes, but they'll do open air transfers with just a flame. Hold on a second. What? Where's Samuel? Mushroom deliveries. Oh, she is Yeah, she's, she, I mean, like she, Came in here and kissed me by a little okay. while ago. I was just asking her just uh, looking for the new vacuum. The new what? The new vacuum. All well, uh, what new vacuum? Don't worry about it. We haven't bought a new vacuum yet. What? We haven't bought a new vacuum yet. That's a lie. Well, apparently we have a new vacuum. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Square grow room can suffer from pockets that don't have enough airflow. But if you put a fan inside for extra circulation, point at those pockets, you can remedy that. I actually wouldn't even recommend that. So, um, as far as like little air pockets, if you put a, if you've got air coming out, out of your room, pulling it out, creating negative air pressure in your grow room, you might have still air parts, but let's say like my grow room is 800 cubic feet and I have a fan that does 800 cubic feet per minute. I plug that fan in, I'm doing a complete air exchange once every minute. Now, granted, some corners might air exchange at a slightly slower rate, but I, I mean, you're still getting airflow through there. Um, I don't like fans in my grow room at all. I don't like it at all. So um, that said, you can absolutely create more circulation that way, but I don't, I don't see the, the need for it. You're welcome, Rusty. Quinoa from Dubai with camel poo and mist with distilled gold water. That sounds like a very valuable substrate. <laughs> very expensive. Uh, Skill God, yeah. What, I mean, this will this will automatically post afterwards. Uh, it'll take some time. I think it takes sometimes 24 hours for it to automatically post, but it will. Please post a video describing on how to breed mushrooms. That sounds so interesting. Joji, I'm sorry. I'm not actually going to do that for a while. Um... I'm glad that it is interesting to people. I am happy to discuss it here, any specific questions. Um, I, right now, breeding is what I'm really leaning into and working on. So I'm happy to help create new growers, <laughs> in part to sell the new strains too, right? Completely selfish. Uh, but at least I'm honest about my selfishness. But that said, um, like I said, I mean, it's as simple as just taking spores from one mushroom and spores from another, two spore prints, and crossing them in a dish, uh, and then sectoring that out. And there's, like, people will show how to do that in, like, Paul Stamets' book. Like, it's in, like, every mushroom book ever. Um, that said, I've developed my own ways of doing things. I'm not sharing those for a while. I will eventually share those. But for now, I really want to get good testing protocols in place, get SOPs written up, and then I want to do some crosses and then – get those strains and play with those strains and sell them off in order to help pay for all the research that we're doing. So um, that said, I mean, I'm still happy to talk to you about the traditional way of growing mushrooms, you know, like we're doing here. And maybe one day I'll, I will, maybe one day sooner rather than later, I will do like a traditional breeding video. Uh, I'm just not there yet. I would rather focus on growing. So especially with, especially with COVID and everything else, the way it is, I'm really concerned with getting as many people making profitable farms as possible. So I don't want people just, you know, growing or if they're growing, you know, like, oh, but I mean, they're profitably, like, even if you're just growing for yourself, you want to do it in a profitable manner. Um, so getting people to where they're either growing healthy food for themselves in the most convenient way possible or the uh, starting up commercial farms and making sure that those get profitable as quickly as possible. That is like my main goal on stuff right now. Um, let's 
Sorry, so I have to try to print invoices. Um, I'm not really quite sure what to do. Let's see. Do I have 120 or 240 All American? I have a 75X. Hey, man, do you know of any resources on different manure based substrate recipes? No. Uh, Paul Stamets and Peter McCoy's books are the only ones I could think of that would have recipes on there. I'm sure there are recipes online. Probably the shroomery uh, would have a lot. Um, since they're dealing mostly with dumb lovers anyways. So that'd be good. Uh, I think Mike Tyson on Instagram, at least, I think he's got a Reddit um, as well. I think he does a lot of manure based recipes for people. I think he does pre sterilized blocks for two. Love you too. Any opinion of cottonseed holes versus soybean holes? Cottonseed holes are a pain to sterilize. Oh my goodness. But they work. Absolutely, they work. Nice to see your guys' faces. Thanks, man. You too. Or rather, your name, since I can't see your face. I'm going to try duckweed for substrate. I am too. I'm going to try it with mixed with sawdust, though. But I have uh, a whole bunch of buckets and trays and stuff growing duckweed on right now. And I just pour my old fish water in there and let them grow out. Also trying some algae. I've got some uh, liquid culture jars with algae media going put in a windowsill and I'm growing the algae out right now. Uh, hair algae primarily. On average, a 12 pound oyster block takes two weeks to uh, to incubate, yes. Thank you for sharing knowledge. Absolutely, please. Do you need a license to sell mushrooms? Um, you can, uh, to, uh, not until you get to a certain point. I think if you make a thousand dollars off it, at least in our state, I don't know. Um, I don't know what your state's going to be, but in my state, I think you can make money off agriculture up to a thousand dollars before you need a business license. But, um, you know, that's also going to be, uh, let's see. Samantha wanted me to tell you guys that she said, tell everyone on the live stream. I'm sorry that I'm always running around like a chicken with its head cut off. I'll try to join you another time. So she is sorry that she's missed you guys, but she will try to join us sometime. Do you prefer unicorn bags? What size filter do you like on your 12 pound bags? I use the point, I use, I get the XLS A, which is the 0.5 micron filter batch for my substrate. For my grain bags, I get the 0.2. So, do you grow chicken of the woods? I do not grow chicken of the woods. I have grown it before. Yields so so. I am considering cloning some out and growing it again. So, what I meant with my previous question was, if cloning from tissue does reset the aging of a culture, does it heal the mushroom diabetes? No, it does not. But growing, you can get it. It's kind of like, you know, let's say that your mushroom starts getting enzyme blindness, the mushroom diabetes. Then you clone it out and you put it on something that doesn't have sugar in it. You can rehabilitate it some. Um, I don't know that it will ever rehabilitate the same. Of course, I don't know that people can be rehabilitated the same. I guess maybe to a certain point. I don't. I don't really know. Um, but no, cloning does not do that. Spores would. I mean, I think maybe epigenetics would have some problems there. Any mycology biology courses you would recommend for someone looking to learn more? What studies did you do? So I went to college for a semester and a half or something like that. Um, I just read books and then read everything I could online when I first started. When I first started, there wasn't really much more than the shroomery going though. Um, then the Facebook group Mushroom Growing started, then Commercial Mushroom Growers Network started, and then we started the Mossback Syndicate. So we've got the Mossback Mushroom Syndicate on Facebook that you guys can join if you like. Um, that group is just starting to get traction and grow, so it's just now starting to get a lot of online, um, like a lot of discussions going these days. But that's a good place to go, in my opinion. Um, we do mentorships and consults. So if you're like we do, we offer a one week mentorship. You can come out here, you stay at a hotel or a campground or whatever you want to do, set up uh, Airbnb. I think it was the last couple guys that got here. And then you just come work with us for a week and you can work production. You can work more with me in liquid culture. You can do uh, deliveries with people like you can learn it from all the different points that you want. Basically, 
I'm here for you for that week to just teach you what you want to learn. Um, and we do set those up. So there's that as far as like a class goes. Um, but uh, honestly, other than that, YouTube channels are good. And then buying books is what I would work on. So um, you don't need to know a ton of biology. In fact, I hate to say it in a way because I started this in order to be a biology guy. But in my opinion, you almost need to know more business um, than you need to know biology. Uh, just because the business is what has allowed me to dive deeper into the biology because I'm not constantly desperate trying to make money, you know. And that frees me up to do the other projects, dive deep into stuff. I mean, my job this past week has been almost entirely just trying to get online orders out the door and then reading uh, studies on um, or at least searching through studies for herisium is really what I've been working on this week. Herisium and then uh, the black poplars, which there's not a lot of information on. And most of it is not translated into English. Mm -hmm. I have grown mushrooms on sunflower seed holes before. Uh, it works fine for oysters in particular. Um, in fact, it's really pretty. Those black seeds with the white my sun run, it's, you'll get very, there are fewer, there are few opportunities for photography when it comes to that white on black. Like it's beautiful. Well, do you have any tips using LC to inoculate agar plates? Uh, yeah, just grab your liquid culture and put a couple drops on. That should be all you need to do. I have a five pound and 10 pound bag of lion's mane masters in my spare bedroom. They're colonizing nicely. What percentage of bag colonization is safe to cut and hopefully beat any fruiting inside the bag? Um, usually with lion's mane, if I see a fair amount of growth, I just use the bag. I don't like, cause a lot of times the places that don't look like they're inoculated have these really teeny tiny little spider webby looking growths. It's like herisium sends out just really light growth and then just fills in. And so, uh, usually my bags sit around for a week. If it's uh, if it's from liquid culture, I'll give it about 10 days. Um, but I don't want anything. I would rather use it a little too early uh, than peak than to use it when it's got fruiting going on inside the bag. Once it's got fruiting in the bag, you bust those up, it starts um, bruising, and the bruising can create rot, and I don't like that. Agreed. Been using a MERV 14 taped to a box fan in my bathroom, growing 30 to 15 pounds weekly for now. Only contam is when I didn't steam my substrate long enough in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, you can get away with a lot of stuff. An open air transfer, like I said, is what we did in college, and we, we did a lot of experiments that way. So, how much are your baggers going to be? How's Ben uh, doing on them? On, got a good design? Yes. So, right now, they're at 1500. Uh, any modification, like 1500 flat rate, if you need any modifications that adds prices. Um, we are selling baggers like crazy right now, and I'm not sure when he's going to raise the price on them and how much he's raising them to. Uh, but I think that he's pretty much got a standard design down now. Um, and what we've got is we do have a shipper that we are telling people to go through. Um, used to be volunteer shipping. I'll have to look up the name. But you know, if you get them to come out and pick up the bagger, and we'll put it on the pallet and wrap it. So, um, you take care of the shipping, and, and we'll 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 send it off to you. Which electric pressure cookers? Uh, All American is the electric kind that I've used before. Seventy uh, five X is the one that I have currently got. No worries. You're welcome, Joe. I'm not. I don't remember what we were talking about. Uh, hey, how many yields can you get before replacing the substrate bag? So we try to, I mean, we, my bags stay in the grow room for about four weeks total. They fruit about twice, sometimes three times. Um, I don't like to let them sit in there for five, six. I mean, I can get five or six flushes out of a, a bag, but at that point they start getting fly larvae laid in them. Uh, they start, that fly larva starts to hatch out. You'll see the little maggots crawling around in your mushrooms and stuff. You don't want that. So we just burn burn and churn uh, i have milo grain inoculated and in the spawning phase would using soy pellets and sawdust like you work as a substrate uh for 
For what? Uh, yeah, for any oyster, for sure. Uh, chestnuts, yeah. It wouldn't for shiitake, but for hirsium, it would. Absolutely. Like lion's vein, comb tooth. Are you backed up with liquid culture orders at the moment? Uh, Skill gun, I am... Uh, I think I'm at about two weeks on some of it right now. So I I am not behind behind like I was. We've got a full timer that we just hired in. He's on his second week with us now. He's about to end his second week today. Um, and that has really allowed me to catch up on stuff. Right now I'm waiting on syringes. Um, as soon as I get the syringes, I'll be able to pull and ship out a massive shipment. I think last week I shipped about 300 syringes. So I'm not behind, but I'm definitely uh, – Definitely not like I'd like to be same day shipping, but I'm not same day shipping right now. I was before COVID hit, but like I said, it's like somebody just hit the button to light speed as soon as COVID hit and business is booming. So just started growing and a chef already. Oh, wait, I thought I skipped something. Just started growing and a chef already wants to buy from me. I am hooked. Any pointers? Uh, yeah, man. Don't undercharge yourself. Um, or don't undercharge, you know, him for you, you know, make sure you get your values worth. Um, always grow the best product you can, but at most importantly, be consistent. If he wants 10 pounds a week, pack the exact same number of blocks every week and be consistent and overproduce. Always overproduce. You can eat it. You can save it for later. You can dry it, but you can use it for samples and handing it out to people and getting that stuff. But I mean, at $8 a pound to restaurants, and I'm cheap compared to a lot of people. A lot of my students start off at $10 a pound and they sell like crazy. I think I've got one set of students that sell for 12 a pound for oysters. But he, I think he's like in LA or something, if I remember correctly. Um, <clears throat> have you ever used quinoa for grains money? Well, Jason, I, I think that I've already answered that, but the answer is no, I have not. It just sounds like a really expensive way to go. But I, I would say it's possible to use it. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. I love that you love my content. The Shroomery rocks. Yeah, man, the, the, the Shroomery was really good to me back in the day. Uh, how much are you selling your oysters for to chefs? Oh, okay, so $80 a case. It comes out to $8 a pound, roughly speaking. Changes throughout the season. Summer is typically lighter uh, on average than 10 pounds, and winter is typically heavier than 10 pounds. But uh, like I said, I do all mine by volume, so... It takes roughly three blocks, three 12 pound blocks to fill a box. Um, so there you can run any, you can run your numbers based off of how much it costs you to make a block, that kind of thing. Metabolic infected grain spawn can be used. What is metabolic infected grain spawn? You tell me it's got metabolite in it. If it's just got metabolite. Yeah, you can use that. So long as it's not infected, like contaminated. How long do you incubate your king oysters? About a month, about four weeks is how long we do that. Uh, yeah, Snow, you're very welcome. I appreciate you thinking I'm a legend. I, <laughs> I am. <laughs> that uh, flatters me a little, I'll be honest. Thank you. Sir, please send me your phone number. No, uh, you can call my business number. That uh, you don't, you can just look it up on, on the website. I will say I don't answer international calls. So sorry, Canadian customers. I, I don't answer that because my plan gets charged a lot for international calls. Email, email me. Um, but I'll be honest, um, I, I don't really have any services I can really help you over there in, uh, because I'm sorry. Bikash, Bikash, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I'm not really sure what I can do to help you in India. I don't know anything about growing mushrooms in India. In fact, you guys probably know more. I'd like to know how to grow the milky mushroom. How do you prevent your fruiting bags from getting stretched out at their base? Our stretch out while cooking in our steamer. Um, our stretch out some for sure. Here, uh, here in just a second, let me drink this one final cup of mate. And we've been at this for about an hour and 40 minutes already. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, let me let me drink this mate and we'll we'll go on a little uh, walkabout. Uh, let's see, but yeah, I'll show you my stretch bags. Is what I'm saying. They stretch out a little bit. I don't really have a problem with them stretching out some. Um, 
how can I make my own liquid culture? Uh, Bob, I've got a bunch of videos on how to do that. If you're talking about the actual media, that video is being released next week. But I mean, it's as simple as one part malt extract, four parts corn sugar, mix all that powder together, 20 grams to 500 milliliters of water, put it in a jar with a magnetic stir, close it up with your liquid culture lid, cook it for uh, 30 minutes at 15 PSI, unless you're using an All-American. I typically cook mine for 45 minutes in the All-American there. So really, really simple stuff, but I do have a video going out on it. Uh, let's see, what mushroom sells the best to restaurants? Oh, wait a minute, nope, sorry, I, I skipped skill guide. Do you let yours, uh, where am I at? Okay, do you let your spent blocks sit for a while before using them for gardening? Uh, sometimes and sometimes not. It depends on the season, really. Right now, I mean, like I said, almost all of ours are going to our landlord. I do have a truckload sitting in the back of my truck right now that we're creating. Samantha's creating a, I think a hosta garden or something like that around the base of our maple tree. So we, she's having me take them there, put the track truck up there and we're having our oldest son unload, which I'm paying him to do. Um, let's see what mushroom sells the best to restaurants. Um, I sell the most of oysters, but I mean, if I had all the hen in the hen of the woods in the world, that probably would sell the best. Um, at least it would be the most expensive, and I wouldn't have to grow as much to make the same amount of money. But oysters are what I do. I mean, you know, in the peak season, uh, in the basement, we we would do about nine hundred pounds a week. Uh, right now, in the summer, I think we're averaging about six hundred pounds a week. So. Uh, but like I said, my herisium is really taken off. So we'll see how that goes. Do you have students from California and what tips did you give them? <laughs> Rother, uh, I think I remember shipping a culture out to you recently. Um, let's see. I have a student in that was in LA, uh, but I haven't talked to him in probably two years. And I told him where he was in LA to charge as much as he could. I don't even know if he's still in business, to be honest. I'm not, like I said, I've not talked to him in two years. Um, I do still have, like, my very first students I ever had are in Atlanta and they're still in business. And I've got two or three different farms that I've consulted on or mentored in Atlanta. They're going gangbusters right now. But keep your prices high in California. That's what I would do. Also, get out of California. I don't, I've heard like so much, so many wealthy people are leaving. Like I would move to like Texas or something, man. I'm ordering my first line of growing block. I can't wait to get where I have the ability to pasteurize substrate and set up my own fruiting blocks. You really helped me understand and fall in love with mushrooms. And my mom and I are super excited and happy to get into growing gourmet mushrooms. And mushroom mushrooms, thank you for having this channel and sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Cody, very much. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me to hear that. Uh, yeah, like I, I understand. I understand completely. I was there myself. You know, I remember getting my first kit, uh, got the first kit and then had, oh, what was it? It was a pearl oyster from Paul Stamets. And I grew mushrooms off that, not knowing any better, took that and broke it up and inoculated four 10 gallon fish tanks full uh, pasteurized straw and fruited those by stretching saran wrap on them over them. And then whenever they started to fruit, I would take that saran wrap and fan it out. And they were some leggy mushrooms, but that is a, I, I know exactly what you mean, man. It, it, uh, it, it was exciting to me too. Aloha from Maui. After my last, I don't want to talk about it. Failure. <laughs> I'm going to sh I'm shutting down while stitching, switching everything. My question is, can or could I break down a consultation fee into segments? Uh, Lance, I do offer one-hour consults, so for sure we do. We do one uh, in Aloha, by the way. But uh, yes, we we do. Um, I'll, I'll do one-hour consults, two hundred bucks for the hour. Um, you know, if you do a three-hour one, um, I can, which is my standard for anything above more than just an hour. I will say. Don't get just an hour if you're wanting to learn a lot about growing mushrooms. Get the three-hour one. Um, if you want, I can probably send you a PayPal invoice that allows you to pay in parts, and then you can just pay as you go. Um, 
so we can do that. But you know, it's it's best if you can, if you're wanting to just get the basics of everything, do the three hour. If you've got very specific pointed questions, do the one hour. I've just started my first grow attempt with a blue oyster spawn and wood chips and plastic buckets. I don't really have a question. Just want to say I think your beard is badass. Thank you, Heat. I appreciate that. I know you've been busy, been playing any online games recently. Yeah, still, I have not. I will say not going into too much. We have a new roommate at the house, and that new roommate has kids. And so I've been doing a lot more child-related activities and – um, you know, just we've been working so much here that it is literally something I don't get to do very often. I will say that I did get, uh, you guys are on my new laptop right now. I got that so I can do video editing on the fly, but yeah, so I went ahead and downloaded StarCraft on there. So maybe you and I can hook up now that I'll be able to, you know, I'll take a lunch break and we'll be able to play during the day or something. Uh, also I've been playing, I played Apex. I picked it up since the new, uh, the new patch came out with uh, the new character. I can't remember her name all of a sudden. Rampart. Um, and I just started playing that. And I'm playing, I've been playing a lot, uh, a lot of Apex in the past day or two, just in the evenings when I get off work. I get off work at five here, so. Hi, from Vegas. Oh, well, hello, Vegas. Welcome to East Tennessee. Could you please tell us about your Maitake growing adventures? Uh, yeah, so my talking worked out really well until the heat came on. But now that it's cooling down, I'm starting to see pinning again. So my talking's been easy. I am really surprised. It, the only problem is it takes forever. Um, but I'll, I'll, that's right. I need to finish this so we can go out there. But uh, my talking is as simple as inoculate grain, grow the grain in, uh, inoculate master's mix bags, and then sit on the shelf until you start seeing gray blobs form. Put in your grow room. Don't even open the bag. Top fruit it. Um, allow As they grow up, as they get bigger and bigger and grayer and grayer, the longer you can let it do that, the better. And then you just cut the top of the bag. And then every week I go in and I cut another inch or two off the top of the bag. And that has me producing a phenomenal mitake. In fact, this maitake that I've had that's been sitting all summer, getting really scarred up and metabolite and gross looking, that stuff is pinning like crazy. I might do a huge spring pack of maitake every spring going forward, just storing it out of the way somewhere, letting it suffer through the heat, and then bringing it in and cold shocking it in my airlock before it goes in the grow room, and bam, just have you know just tons of maitake growing in that way. Uh, in fact, I would say you don't even need a humidifier for maitake until the very end. Um, you might be able to just create like an incubation room with lighting on a timer and be good enough there. So, hey man, can you use a dried shroom to do a liquid culture? Um, sometimes you can do it with uh, like a gill rake and rake the gills and, and get spores that way. But no. Uh, okay. Actually, some mushroom species you can. There's a certain type of reishi that is... Uh, it's got a, a sporocarps. Is that the right word? I can't remember the word for it all of a sudden. Basically what it is is it creates clonal spores, right? Um, oh, man, I'll remember the word. I will. I will remember the word. I can't remember the word. Okay. So anyways, there's spores. But they are just clonal spores, right? It is just its own DNA just packaged into little spores along the mycelium. And what that does is the mycelium can completely dry out. And then whenever wet comes again, like a nice environment comes again, they will those spores will open back up and it will just regrow the mushroom. So, you know, you can do that with a dried mushroom, but that's only certain types and not all of them. But, Roger, the answer is mainly no. You typically want fresh. In fact, I've got a, a pheasant back that I picked yesterday out in the woods. I'm going to try to clone out today. So, Wow, well, you bought the warm weather pack? Thank you, Caleb. I really appreciate that. I, I look forward to getting your order out. Um, give me just a little bit of time to, to get the syringes in and get it pulled, and we'll get it gone. Wet weight, 10% grain spawn is okay for pasteurized wheat straw straight, uh, 
straw, uh, straw of substrate. My goodness, Andrew. Uh, yeah, basically, 10% is pretty good, pretty good rate. Uh, the higher the percentage, the less likely you are to have contamination. 10% is a pretty strong number. I think I inoculated about 1%. But my stuff's been sterilized, steam sterilized, not, or steam pasteurized, ultra pasteurized. I trained some wood lovers to eat dead leaves and pond water and put it into my pond. The blob grows larger every week. That sounds awesome. Take pictures, send them to me. I want to see it. That is cool. That's, oh, I want to have an entirely liquid farm, like an entirely liquid farm. I want to grow just rafts of mycelium with my mushrooms growing out of them. That would be so cool. How much space were you using for your grow rooms when you were doing 900 pounds a week? Uh, I had one 12 by 12 room and one 11 by 19 room. I don't remember. I'm going to add it up real quick. Uh, let's see. 11 times 19 is 209. That's right. Okay. And then the 12 times 12. Oh, yeah. I knew that already. 144. <laughs> well, uh, 144 plus 209, 353. So I had 353 square feet, and I was doing 900 pounds a week in that. Uh, the grow one we only have one grow room built here so far, but it holds about a hundred more bags than those two grow rooms I had at the house put together. Uh, so neat, I have not fermented entirely to create um, sterile spawn. I find that um, I've seen people do some liquid fermentation in you know, like primarily in India um, using mainly straw. I haven't seen anyone using grain before, so no, I've not done that. My son loves to play Apex when he ain't at work. Yeah, I. Well, uh, my gamer tag is Myco Miner, so M Y C O M I N E R, Myco Miner, and I am happy to play with any mushroom people out there. So, if there if there's somebody who wants to play, I am not the best player. I. Am not the worst player. I just enjoy it, and I usually can only sit down for a time or two. But send me a message because I get so many random requests that I don't just play uh, at a just at a, just a request typically. Thanks for the info. Got to run. What? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Take care. Do you need any light for the incubation room? Uh, I don't do any. I try to do it in the dark as much as possible. Where it's out in just the open warehouse, it gets ambient light. And light throughout the day. So, um, yell at me. When did you yell at me? When did you yell at me, Skull Gun? <laughs> um, what is better for a liquid culture, spores or material of a fresh mushroom? Um, it depends on what you're wanting to do. Uh, if you're wanting to create a new culture from that culture, then spores. Uh, if you're wanting to get the exact clone, then you want to clone it by using the fresh material from the mushroom. Interior material, typically. Uh, and if you watch, I've got a video about how to do a needle biopsy from a mushroom straight to liquid culture. I do it all the time um, for cloning stuff on the quick. And I always clone to that and agar. And then usually my liquid culture comes in clean. If it doesn't, I have the agar backup to work with. And if it does come in clean, then I have you know, legal culture that much faster. So. Shiitake, can you prevent to start fruiting in the bag? I mean, mine always fruit in the bag a little bit. The main way really is to keep it in the dark. Um, but that's not possible where I'm at. So have you grown mushrooms hydroponically? If so, what kind are, what are the challenges? I mean, I grow them in liquid culture and they fruit sometimes if I allow a big mat to grow. In fact, I've got a picture on my Instagram. Um, where a mushroom, the mycelium grew, a mat on top, grew up the glass through the syringe filter and then popped a mushroom up the syringe filter. So I guess that's growing mushrooms hydroponically, but uh, no, I have not actually tested any of it yet. So we'll see. Yeah, thanks Josh. I mean, I'll, I'll play with him for sure. Yeah, so, all right, I'll download Apex. Yeah, man, do so. I'm on uh, Xbox One. Like I said, I've got my, my, just gave you my gamer tag. So 
I, I'll happily play. I like I like Apex a lot. Um, I have the reflexes of an old man, but I do have the cunning of an old man. So, you know, ambush predation only. If I pasteurize bagged wet substrate at 185 degrees Fahrenheit with steam, if it is it if it okay, or the steam must have direct contact with the substrate? No, absolutely in the bags. Uh, that's a great time. Let's go ahead. Greetings from Switzerland. Thanks, Mario. Greetings from East Tennessee. Uh, what's my Instagram link? It's Mike O'Miner. Um, that is mine. And then Mossy Creek Mushrooms is uh, the business page. Let me get my little uh, whatever this is called on. Um, that way I don't have anything. In fact, how do I... Can I go to tablet mode, I wonder, while on... Uh, on live stream. I don't want it to end the live stream. Let's see what we can do, guys. I'm going to see if I can't get this tablet mode while we're talking here. But um, I play Apex on Xbox One. Um, can, but I think that it's cross-platform, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's cross-platform. Can you do more strain videos? Would love to see more of those videos if you have time. Yeah, Rother, I'm, I'm absolutely working on some of those for sure. Um, uh... Hold on. Ready to detach. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be a little weird, guys. I have never done this before, but you can see my messy depth there. We'll see how we go from here. That is a weird. Okay. Okay, so Rother, I'll absolutely do some more strain videos. Um, let's see, Cody, Rocket League. I have never played Rocket League. Any good? It just not. I don't know what that means, Kamanos. Uh, my gamer tag is Bushido Joker. Okay, maybe I'll have to try it sometime. How much are your consultation fees? Also, thanks for all the useful info on your channel. Much appreciated. Yeah. Consultation is $200 an hour, unless you want to do an in-person consult. We charge more for those. But you can come to the farm and learn everything um, on the fly. If anyone wants to be my friend. Yo, Andrew, quick question. I inoculated some millet about 10 days ago, and it still don't seem like silly. Any suggestions, or is this not a problem? Uh, sometimes 10 days, it can take. It depends on what species you're using. With a spore syringe, ah, yeah, it'll be longer. So, uh, so the people asking about... Um, bags these all came out of the steamer just like a few minutes ago so you can see they still have steam like the condensation built on them but that is exactly how they come out and you can see right here that we just have them tucked under but that is exactly how they are set up and steamed in the the steamer just stack just like that, and then we de-stack when we put them on the shelves. So, uh, let's see. So, you do you grow any other food for fun in your home garden or anything? Yeah, I'll show you the fish and stuff here in just a minute. But we grow peppers, tomatoes, cabbage, things like that. Just curious because I'm curious about you using your spinning fruiting blocks for compost. I absolutely do that. We just put them in the garden and plant the plants directly in the blocks. Also has that cool touch coming along. Man, fantastic. Yield's still a little low on it. Um, it definitely has suffered in the summertime, the heat, but uh, it's been a pretty superior mushroom so far. Um, and if you notice any mushrooms ended up coming up in your garden or if your garden plants like any particular spit for new block type. So they seem to like it all, um, but they... We do get mushrooms in the in, in coming up in the garden all the time. So let's see. If you were to start new in a new large city, what would your first month of startup look like? How many pounds would you try to start with? That is a question for pre-tour. So let me come back to that, Enrique. Um, I want to answer that, but I can't think about it while trying to 
keep you guys from falling and doing the tour. So let's see. Tell you what, let's just do the tour first so you guys can see the new place. So um, <clears throat> we'll start back where we were. I kind of feel like I'm flying a spaceship with this thing. Okay, so here is where we were. That is my very sparse office at the moment. This is the culture lab. It's gonna be kind of loud in here, but this is where we do like, there's liquid cultures. This is like basically just my private lab. Um, where we mix all of my media, agar, etc., and then that's the inner sanctum. We'll call it. We have the backwards is the way to do this lab where we have our fresh production blocks um, that have just come out of the steamer, and they're all cooling right now. We have the lab. That's just the, the fruiting block lab where we, you know, inoculate all the fruiting blocks. Uh, here, we have our shipping center. This is where we have everything stored up either to ship or whenever I pull, I'm pulling cultures, I'll bring them out here. Samantha has made up a bunch of uh, bins over here for the... It says like it's got labels on it, bear's head, etc. So I'll pull syringes, throw them in there, and then when they're packing up the orders, they'll, uh, they'll all go in right there. And then that's just employee stuff and the uh, refrigerator for people's lunch. You don't hear a lot of music in the background now, but. Let's see. Here we got. Little fishies. Mm -hmm. So my little fishy friends. Sorry if I made you guys sick. So. We'll walk over this way. We've got breeding stock for the fish. Right there, that's just grow out right now for some others we've got. I'm not to speak a little loud, but just supply storage. Yeah, we'll go to the bagging area in a minute. But they are, that's my kids' center week. They can wear out and do homework. And then, This is the airlock to the grow rooms. See, so we got two of them there. And somebody was asking about something in the grow room, but so we go right there. I'm sorry, guys. I really can't see. Um, I can't see con the comments and stuff right now very easily. <laughs> One of these days we'll get real doors but you see today's delivery day because we just picked and everything is gone except the full guy that's one of my new strains being trialed out and somebody was asked about my taki um this might give you a good idea so these were packed on the 127th day of the year. And if you look really closely, right here, you can see it's starting to form primordia. And those are just here in the, uh, the room, just being cold shocked, basically. Let's see. And I'll come back and I'll just read the comments as we go um, when I get back. But it's going to be loud. I'll have to cut the fan in a second. 
right now, all of this stuff here, that came from that farm in Atlanta we bought out. Uh, Walk-in cooler and air conditioning units and the like. Um, got all these rolling racks from there. Got some more incubation going. Oh, I see some Neurospora. Get rid of that. So we got loading docks. And then this is bin space, which I won't show for very long, but there's Ben working. So you guys can see this place has changed. We got another grow room that we're building out along the way. Um, got the front loading dock here, which maybe that'll, there we go. That. Those white trucks are for our neighbors, which is uh, a cable construction company. They're running fiber optic for the entire county here. And there's a bagger for a client that Ben just finished up. We got there's uh, Laura and Jack. Jack, you mind being on the camera? Okay. So, they're just bagging right now. Hi, Laura. Um, and up there we've got the mezzanine. So, I'm not going to take it there. It's boring and it's just supplies. Oh, and people were asking about the steamer. That is our boiler. I'm not going to show you the inner workings of that because I don't want you to build a bomb and die. And... This is what our trough looks like. We just have the steam injector port down here. And it goes through under the stairs and just into the wall there. Um, like I said, I can't show the boiler. I don't want to create any liability issues for us. But there is more stuff. And that is pretty much the grand tour. Um, a lot of goings on, a lot of little details in the works, but we're getting it. So, all right, looks like I can see now, thankfully. The light's not just killing me. Taking my shoes off. Never enter my inner sanctum with shoes on. Let's see about getting this back on the dock. Yes. All right. Cool. Now. It's computer stuff for you now. All right. Let me go back. You guys getting a lot of lag? It kind of felt like we we're getting a lot of lag there. All right. How? All right. Somebody asked me a question. Enrique Gonzalez. Okay. If you were to start new in a large, in a new large city, what would your first month of startup look like? How many pounds would you try to start with? If I had to start completely new. Um, my first month would basically just be building infrastructure and getting brain spawn ready. Um, you know, get liquid culture spun up. So it'd take me about 10 days to spin my liquid cultures up. It'd take another 10 days to get grain spawn produced, 10 to 14 days. And then I'd start packing bags at the end of the month. As far as if I could just, I would probably buy in spawn and be producing blocks alongside everything else. So I'd be starting my liquid cultures purchasing spawn, packing fruiting blocks, packing spawn with, from liquid culture, starting my own production with fruiting blocks at the end of the month, getting my first mushrooms through the grow room done. And that's if I've got all my infrastructure in place. I mean, I'm sure I'd be building that as long as well as we went to. 
Um, my first goal would be 100 pounds a week. That's where I would start off. So like 33.3333 12-pound blocks is what it would come out to, something like that. So I'd do 40 12-pound blocks a week for like four weeks, and then I'd immediately up it, knowing that once my 100 pounds started coming in, I'd immediately start selling that and then probably oversell and going from there. So hope that helps, Henry. If it doesn't, just let me know, and I'll, we can go into more detail. How did your space? How did you space your new? Close that. All right. How did you space your new shelves for your grow room? Um, I didn't. Ben did. Uh, we wanted. We weren't as constrained on space this time, so all we did is we knew we wanted four shelves. Actually, do you mean the shelves or the shelves? Like how deep they are or what dimension are you looking for, Skill? And I'll, I'll get it for you. Awesome to know I can plant directly in them. Thank you. You're very welcome, Cody. Absolutely, man. That's that's the easiest way to go. Hey, Andrew. Heavy face fungus, dude. Does that come with growing shrooms piece? Yeah, basically. Well, this is all my mycelium. I'm actually working on having Samantha make a, uh, a wizard a mushroom wizard t-shirt, right? And have some mycelia. Awesome. Mushrooms are so cool. I agree, Cody, for sure. I would love to see your duckweed set up while you were up. Uh, the duckweed setup's not here. It is um, at home. So I have a lot more fish tanks at home because I do fish for fun and, my, and mushrooms are my commercial crop. We'll say. Uh, right now, actually, I've got to butcher a bunch of ducks. I do have ducks out back, right off the back dock. Um, and they're, they're going up and down the old railroad tracks here eating stuff. But, uh, um, I've got to butcher a bunch of ducks at the end of next week. After that, I'm going to have to start going through my fish looking for brood stock and then anything that's not brood stock, we'll have to butcher and eat that soon in the next few weeks as well. And then from there, hopefully I'll have new tilapia, uh, fingerlings coming in to replace the other ones. But I'm trying to get my protein stuff set up. Um, I've been eating a lot of bread lately, but I've noticed I do not do well eating a lot of bread. I get these little bumps called dyshydrosis in between my fingers. I get little blisters. I put on a lot of weight when I eat bread. I really think the Scots Irish are, uh, Scots Irish have just, you know, they were eating beef and almost no bread for like 200 years. So I think, uh, or 400 years, I think. Probably selectively bred me to just eat meat. Because I notice if I just go on like almost entirely carnivore kind of diet stuff, man, my blood pressure drops, my cholesterol drops, my inflammation drops, and I feel stronger and faster and fitter. And I don't have to do any weightlifting and I just lose weight. I need to go back on that. Let's get fat. What is the warmest temps for your warm weather oysters? I mean, I've got that mother of pearl, like I said, is fruiting in like 90 degree something weather. So... That is probably the warmest temp one I've got so far. Uh, pinks are doing that. Golds are doing well, but they kind of suffer once you get up in the 90s too. Love your channel. It has inspired me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Samantha would love your humor. Slog, slog. Hi, I'm Malik. I have two questions. Do you have any good European spore equipment website that I can provide quality stuff? Besides, you don't ship to France. And any tips for cordyceps cultivation? Uh, tips for cordyceps cultivation is go to Apex Grower. Uh, William Padilla Brown and buy his cultivation handbook. It's just a digital copy you can get. It's great. Um, Ryan Paul Gates of Terrestrial Fungi is also really good. Uh, I don't know of any European suppliers of stuff um, directly. That's not, you know, already just like mainstream stuff. Probably need to work on that because I would love to tour Europe one day and probably the best way to do it would be to set up some mentorships or consults over there. So I should probably know my stuff for Europe. Particularly, oh, I want to go to Normandy so bad. I'd like to go to Scotland, Ireland, Normandy. I'd like to go visit my ancestral lands of, you know, like Northeast England, right there on the border. And uh, Scandinavia would be nice. So, obviously. Also want to go to Calabria in Italy. But hashtag spaceship earth, right? <laughs> I like how nice your laminar flow hood looks. Yeah. My one in there looks nice. The one in my, uh, my, uh, uh, the main lab 
the Freedom Block Lab, everyone's kind of beat all the tech. Sunit so says, how to prepare manure-based substrate for portobello cremini cultivation. Uh, Sunit, so I don't know anything about portobello or cremini cultivation. When I've used manure, I've always used composted manure, and I just put a scoop in with whatever substrate I'm using, and I, I steam it and then inoculate it like normal. I, I don't have any other tips other than that. I wish I did. Um, I'm really not – I don't grow much manure-based stuff because I started in my home – and I didn't want to have any kind of manure-based sub substrates or smells coming out of my house in a residential area. So I don't have a lot of uh, experience with it. Clean AF, indeed. <laughs> At least the labs and stuff are. Samantha, the guy that we just hired, Jack, that you guys saw out there bagging, uh, his previous job was from a cleaning company. He'd worked there for years. So he knows more about cleaners and solvents and everything else than I do. Ever since we've hired him, just he just cleans as he goes. Every, everything is as clean as I've ever seen it. And Samantha loves it because Samantha is a clean freak. I am not. As you saw my desk, it is a cluttered piece of garbage. But chaos breeds creativity, we'll say. Um, how long do your production blocks take to cool? Uh, we just cool them overnight, and then they're good to go. I want to thank you to you, Ben, and your wife for all the help I got during your videos because I have a little... I have a little mushroom farm, LCs. I've grown my own green and spawn since then. I'm following you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Zoltan. I'm glad we could help you. Um, Samantha, Ben, and I talked about this. We were really scared when we first started the YouTube channel that it was going to rob us of income. And I have found that to be exactly the opposite. Sharing information has brought me so much more back that, um, in a way, it's almost the selfish thing to do is to share and give stuff away. Uh, beyond being selfish though, I mean, we started this because in part we wanted to shortcut people. It took us years to get our farm profitable. Now when I do a mentorship, people are profitable within like the first three months. I mean, I've had farms go like to, to start with us, buy all their equipment and then be in the black within, you know, three months or so. Like that's just incredible for a business, <laughs> especially a farm. Farms normally are not that profitable or if they are, they, they tend to generate profit a little bit of profit over a long period of time. As soon as I get all the parts, I'm looking to have a fish tank with real plants and edible fish, one herbivore tank and one carnivore. So I can use the different nutrients for both type of fish. I agree, Cody. That's really cool. Also. So tilapia, there are certain types of tilapia that can eat meat and then certain ones that are entirely vegetarian. And so I've got to both of those types to do the exact same thing that you're talking about. Um, the other side of that is that you can use a, a, a edible aquatic plants. And a lot of people don't think about this, but this is what I'm starting up. We actually, one of our rooms is going to be an aquaponics room and we're going to do water spinach, water cress, uh, taro, um, water chestnuts. Uh, I don't remember all the ones that we've got listed out, but water plants have evolved to uh, uptake ammonia and ammonium directly. They don't have to convert it back from nitrogen to ammonia like terrestrial plants do. So, your water can stay cleaner with aquatic plants and aquatic plants just don't stop growing. They just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And if you look at aquaponics as a, I'm growing the plants for profit and the fish are just there as plant fertilizers. And then you can, you know, you get to eat the fish or you get to sell the fish occasionally, but they're really there just to feed the plants and you're selling King Kong shoots, your, your water spinach, uh, selling watercress bundles, um, you're selling water chestnuts once or twice a year. You're growing taro out, which looks like big, like beautiful elephant ears. And I, uh, you can even do flowers and sell aquatic flowers for people to set up. Like, I think that that is absolutely the way to make aquaponics just incredibly profitable. Stop selling cheap lettuce. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Sorry, guys, I got like a bunch of notifications all at once. I just want to make sure Samantha's not in a ditch somewhere. Um, okay. It apparently was nothing. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all right. Do you have pressure treated wood in your grow room or just regular two by fours? I believe it's pressure treated. Though right now I'm not sure because Lowe's is having a really hard time getting, we're having a really hard time um, 
we're having a really hard time getting pressure treated anything here. They're saying that the chemicals they use are from China and therefore are, uh, you know, with all this stuff going on, are getting harder and harder to find. Now, uh, are you are you only using one AC unit for both rooms? Yes, for right now. It is entirely underpowered. Um, okay. Sorry about that. The phone won't bother me again for a moment. Um, it is, we've got a five ton unit and a couple other ACs that we bought off that farm in Atlanta that will be going in for the grow rooms and the incubation rooms. Uh, we just wanted to make it through this summer. So that is what we did. That one window unit is covering both grow rooms and runs all the time, except at night right now, because we were going through a cool spell right now, thankfully. I don't know if we needed this cool spell. Um, if I just wanted to do a little trial run, what would I need? Uh, trial run of what? Trial run of liquid culture, trial run of oysters. You can just grow a kit, like an oyster mushroom kit on your kitchen table. Um, if you're wanting to like just see if you like growing mushrooms, that kind of thing. Do you plan to build a second level or loft space? Yes, uh, there will be a mezzanine over the grow rooms and the incubation. In fact, we're thinking about putting our break room and stuff up there. I've never grown any before. Yeah, so in that case, T, I would just like get a uh, get a kit. Um, there are a lot of good kit providers. I don't provide kits anymore. And I, I just it wasn't profitable enough, and it was kind of a pain to always have what people wanted available. Um, but there are people who specialize in kits, and like uh, I think Field and Forest does a bunch. Um, but those are the people I would go to and just grow some mushrooms out and see if you even like them. I mean, you never know. Some people, I've seen people spend $10,000 on starting a farm and they find out they hate growing mushrooms. I really think you should just know that first. <laughs> so Gary, getting started with genetics. Can you share some info on breeding versus cloning and some key pros and cons of both? Thanks in advance. Sure, Zach. Um, so as far as breeding strains goes, um, you know, the, the basic concept is take a spore print of one type, spore print of another, and you get, um, your inoculation loop, you have your agar dish, you scrape along that, do a zigzag pattern, scrape along the other one after sterilizing, doing all the normal sterilization you would do in lab work, and then streak along the other way. Wherever your streaks cross, you'll see, because your spores will grow out in those lines, where you have cross sections you can take from there, and you have a higher chance of getting new strains from that place those in new agar dishes. When you see growth come out, you'll see different types of growth coming out from your central point. Those are each, those are called sectors. You sector that out. Each one should be enough, uh, enough of a new strain basically to go with. So um, the difference between that is growing from spores, uh, from breeding from two different strains, or you can do a self-isolation, which is a mushroom bred to itself. Um, you're going to have different strains than what you started with. So the pro of that is that you get new genetic information to work with and play with and new things to try. The con of it is you don't have the same parameters from the parent strain. So if the parent strain was a really good strain, none of those new strains are going to have that necessarily. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Some will be even better and some will be worse and you just don't know what you're going to get. But with a clone, you know what you're getting every single time. So that's the that's the real thing with cloning is beyond being a little bit faster, it is this, you get the same repeatable results every time. Breeding, you get new stuff, but that's how you get new stuff. So I hope that works. I have to ask, how do you keep humidity up while venting the room? Well, as you saw in there, um, to keep CO2 low. So we... Our humidifiers run, they bottom out at 65%, top out at 85%, goes, you know, it'll go all, it'll run until it hits 85, cut off, and it waits till it goes all the way down to 65. We vent 24 seven, so the fan never turns off, it's just constantly running, um, and that's how we do it. I, I don't I do not do anything else, so. Well, y'all are close to me, I might have to come visit y'all. Yeah, Joshua, we have a storefront, you're welcome anytime, man. You make me miss my big beard. I cut it the other day because it was too hot. Never cutting my beard again. <laughs> yeah, it uh, 
it takes a long time. This is uh, a little over a year's growth for me. Um, Ben's got a much more impressive one. This is like all the way down to here when he talks. Oh, look at that. Mine even does it a little bit. But when Ben talks, his beard waggles. It's It looks like it's like a dwarf. It reminds me of a dwarf. It's hilarious. But Ben's not even supposed to. He wasn't, he wasn't supposed to have a beard at work. And then he ended up making it. So uh, let's see. Hello from Brazil here. I started this week as a hobby mushroom cultivation. Thanks to your knowledge, I hope it will work out and become a business. Well, Charles, congratulations, man. Um, I know there's a, quite a few mushroom growers in Brazil these days. I think that it would be wonderful to go down to Brazil and see your farm one day. So let me know how that goes, please. It's lagged, but it stopped lagging now. Good. I figured it. It seemed like it stopped lagging on this side. Lance says, hi, Laura. <laughs> Yeah, well, Laura's got herself a man now. You might have to watch out. <laughs> Do you inoculate spawn bags with liquid culture or only grain jars? Um, with liquid culture and grain jars, both. Howdy, y'all. Late to the game again. <laughs> Miser, welcome. Sorry, man. We had a uh, – I, I did have it, like, posted for a couple of days this time. So at least people had that option. But – um, not everyone necessarily saw it. So make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe so that you can also get that notification and know when I'm going live. Um, let's see. Vertically, how much space between the shelves? Thank you. I remember you had six shelves on each, so we have seven case in your basement and I think they were eight feet tall. So we do have, um, I think there's seven shelves now and they're roughly 12 or 14 inches apart. Uh, guys, I'm sorry, give me one second. Lost Creek Mushrooms is Andrew. Uh, I'm doing all right. Can I, can I call you back? I'm in the middle of a live stream. All right, thank you very much. Sorry, I was the school. I just want to make sure it was uh, not my kid in trouble or something. Um, <clears throat> so I think it was 12 to 14 inches. Carbs are really bad, bro. Don't eat on the bread. I'm Scott's Irish too, brother. I just eat meat and greens. Anything else I'm feeling? That's exactly the way it is, man. Like meat and greens, um, onions, things like that, and I just feel amazing. But right now, I ate bread yesterday. I ate spaghetti the day before been eating a, I think I ate pizza the day before that and I just feel so sluggish and my joints hurt so bad today. Like I woke up and I felt like I got hit by a train. That's exactly how it goes for me. I really think that I'm just not cut out for them. Um, if you know what a Zola is, it might make a good substrate. I, yes, I do know what a Zola is. Um, also, Wolfia grows in my pond out back. It's what uh, Mossy Creek gets its name, Mossy Creek. And uh, it looks like it's covered in moss and that stuff I think would be really good because it's very high in nitrogen. Thanks so much. You've always been a great help. One more. What strains do you grow and what percentage of total are they? What percentage of sales are farmers markets versus so how many strains do I grow? I don't even know right now, man. Um, like I said, I've got like 300 and something strains sitting waiting to be trialed. I'm trialing new strains all the time. Um, I have maybe 87, I think, liquid cultures going right now, each one a different cult, uh, different strain. Um, but some of those are different species, and some of them are the same species. Uh, most, in fact, most of them are just oysters in different ways. But um, I, I would say, like, as far as species goes, like, um, oysters are 80% of my business. So... Farmers markets, I don't do farmers markets right now. I do a CSA, but I would say it's less than 1% of my business. Most of that is still restaurants, uh, primarily restaurants that do delivery and pickup right now, options right now, like pizza joints, got a couple of Asian places, um, got a couple of cool bistros that are still going. Uh, what else? Samantha went to a couple. <coughs> oh, a place called RT Lodge. Up in Maribel, that one, that one's still doing really well. Difficulties in cultivating with shiitake. Uh, the difficulties in cultivating shiitake are typically centered around its long incubation time. It takes eight to ten weeks to uh, to incubate. 
shiitake. So space requirements are probably the biggest concern when growing it. I mean, that's probably just hands down the biggest difficulty is waiting long enough for it to grow. So do you do grocery stores? If no, why not? Uh, regulation. I stay as far away from regulation as I possibly can because it is easier to do business when there is little regulation. So because there is no regulation on me selling to restaurants directly, I go with that. And because there is a ton of regulation, either store enforced or by the FDA, um, I prefer not to get into grocery stores. I mean, I might be able to do some like bulk stuff and everything else, but it's just as you start getting to packaging requirements, the amount of money you make per man hour just goes way down. So I'd much rather expand on the parts of the business that make me far more money per man hour. Uh, Cause time's the only thing I can't get back. I can get materials back. So I don't care to spend all the money in the world on materials it is my time that I must save. It took me over a year to make profit. And by profit, I'm talking about gas and food money. Well, Rocky river, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to it. And I mean, it, it can take a long time for sure. It took me, you know, Five years, I think, before I finally started turning a profit for my farm didn't need out of home income. But I have three kids and my um, standard of living went pretty low for a while. So, you know, it took me a while to get it figured out. But we also, I mean, we grew on straw. We grew on uh, wheat brand blocks. We grew on all kinds of different things. We tried farmers markets, and CSAs and restaurants. We've tried uh, I mean, just all kinds of different things, different types of infrastructure. And it took really, it was when never Ben Samantha and I came together to, to really create the system that we have now that made a, a really unified thing. But I mean, we had a lot of help on other ends too. I mean, uh, we've got an investor who doesn't work on the farm um, and they were there during the really, really, really early days. Um, in fact, I, that's how I got my flow hood. So the, um, let's see, Ben is a master at building infrastructure that is good and cheap. Like, not that it is cheap as in crass, but as in it is cheap to build and it produces way more value than you've ever put into it. I mean, that's why we can sell baggers for $1,500. We're selling a $1,500 bagger that makes a 12 pound bag every 10 seconds. Every six seconds. It's every six seconds. So when they're out there working and folding, we're averaging a one 12 pound bag every six seconds. That is just phenomenal. So, um, and then to get that for 1500, like the, 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 almost every farm that we've sold these to says that it pays itself off in the first run. So that kind of stuff. I mean, that's, that's the, how you get to your profit. It's just that cheap, but good infrastructure. Edible aquatic plants. My mind just blew. <laughs> your cheese. Yeah, I've not been spreading that one around, so I thought I might turn that one into a business, but it's going to take me longer to turn that into a business. In fact, I would rather hire someone to come in and do the fish stuff for me. So if anybody does fish stuff and wants a job um, that probably doesn't pay you enough and overworks you, come on. You'll at least get to do something interesting. Uh, earlier, you said kings were a slow grower. It took a tissue coin of one of the South Korean kings I mentioned earlier, and the MMC is super aggressive on LC and AR. Yes. It is normal for it to be aggressive on agar and liquid culture, but uh, it's the fruiting blocks. They, they need time to incubate, to fully colonize, but then there's a resting period there too that I have noticed is good for, for good growth. So it takes about a month for the substrate to grow in, but I'd say the grain spawn grows in about as fast as any other oyster grain spawn grows in. Sorry for my bad English. It's Google Translate. Have a nice day. I have to work. All right. No worries, Zoltan. I, I'm not worried about it at all. I'm sorry for my bad English. <laughs> Rich says, is anyone buying bulk hardwood pellets? I am, um, but it, by bulk, do you mean the pallet? Because I'm buying by the pallet. And Rocky River says they're buying by the pallet. Rich Jenkins says, 20 to 40 foot container from Asia. So no, I am not doing that. Some Western states have a hard time getting hardwood. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, Seth Fisher of, um, oh my gosh, mushroommediaonline.com sell sawdust it's a little bit more expensive but you can even get pallets shipped to you sometimes direct from the mills so starter supply can't get it here really interesting uh, what about fur pellets douglas fur pellets you might be able to get those uh have you ever watched Earth Hangers youtube channel on scandinavian viking studies norse religion really pretty good um i have not but i will watch it 
Let's see. Uh, is that the name of his channel, Aerith Hangers? I'll check that out. Let me write that down. Um, all right. Okay, got to go. We'll watch the rest later. Thank you for the info. Have a nice day and hope to see you soon. Yep, Joshua, you take care. Hope you get to see this. That I said goodbye. I wasn't ignoring you. Uh, last year, that's Aerith Harger. Gotcha. Harger. Oh, that sounds a little bit Norwegian, huh? Um, <clears throat> mine was your same size. I feel like I lost a harvest or something. Same sick to my stomach feeling after cutting my beard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It, uh, it would make me sick to my stomach to cut my beard off. The shotgun in the corner, is that for when the shrooms kick off? <laughs> that's right, man. That's uh, that's for whenever we have the zombie mushrooms coming in. Uh, could you use a large inoculated log raft to help with the algal blooms and farm runoff problem in Lake Erie? So anything that would soak up extra nutrients, I imagine, would help. I mean, it's just my guess anyways. I don't really know much about the algal problems that in Lake Erie. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of driftwood. Huh. So if you plug driftwood, the driftwood is usually pretty light, and the uh, water has been expressed out of it, hasn't it? <laughs> so Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Samantha apparently found one of the cats with the car. So it is uh, now sitting comfortably in the passenger seat riding around with her on deliveries because apparently it crawled into the car. She said she even thumped the hood, and it still came with her. I grew up in Oodawa, by the way. Just down the street from you in Oregon now, though. Cool to see folks from Tennessee, though. Yeah, Cody, uh, we're, we're kind of everywhere now. Tennessee's kind of that, it's that place, right? So, eh, not a long way. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. I'm, I'm almost through the, let me finish these comments. Well, guys, I'm about to end it. Um, we've been doing this for almost three hours anyways. I'm getting tired. Thank you all. I saw that there are a ton of orders coming through the website right now. Thank you, guys. I am hope some of you are grabbing that mother of pearl oyster. Like I said, that is easily the strain I am most proud of. Uh, and little quick tip, if you order the warm weather pack now before the end of this weekend, you're going to be getting an extra syringe for free because I'm adding it as of, like, already this week we've added the new strain but uh we haven't added it on the website which means the price increase hasn't kicked in yet so just just a little hint but that said um let me finish these comments out and then i will call it good guys i really appreciate you all you have made a great live stream i'm sorry i haven't done this something in a while but uh the videos are back on i got this this laptop specifically so i can edit between the two places to make it much easier to produce videos so we'll go with that. Uh, you're very welcome, Skill. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Funly Shed said, explain over oven sterilization for millet corn grain sterilization. I don't know anything about oven sterilization. Um, so not really quite sure what to do there. Uh, wish I could help you on that one. <clears throat> Already used to make, unless you're talking about like dry sterilization, in which case it's not really good for grain. You want wet sterilization. Already used to make grain spawn from a grain... Already used to make grain spawn from grains from a grain spawn. How many generations is it safe to do that? As long as you can keep it clean. Um, everyone has the different amount. Mine, I try to keep it around three or four times expansion. That's about it. But I mean, I've gone way further than that. And I know some people have done fifteen. I don't know how in the world they kept it clean for fifteen generations, but they did. So um, it is possible to keep just going. What do you think of the crops with coffee substrate? I don't like coffee substrate. I find it to be a pretty poor producing um, substrate and hard to keep clean. Um, beyond that, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of a free-for-all there. So, um, 
It works pretty good as an additive to shiitake spawn, though. Shiitake really likes the acidic nature of coffee and kind of speeds up that. So when you come to Brazil, let me know. We plan something. Uh, I appreciate it, man. I like it. It will be a long time before I become the Brazil, uh, especially with all the travel restrictions and stuff. I don't want to get down there and get uh, caught. But uh, love and peace to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Much love to you, Julie. Thank you so much. Peace, love, goodwill to Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and thank you for your time and everyone in here. Y'all have a great day. You too. Uh, how about stream, steam cooking rather than PC on the stove? You can do that, but not with grain so much. Grain requires pressure. It requires absolute cleanliness. So you really need a pressure cooker to do grain spawn. Um, but that said, I mean, they're pretty, they're not that expensive compared to what they do. And you get to use them for food processing and all that other stuff. Uh, again, guys, thank you all that so much for that. I really appreciate you guys have made like a really fantastic comeback on the live streams. I am just, uh, I don't know. I'm a little beside myself, but uh, yeah. Thank you all very much. Have a good day. Keep swan culture y'all.